Freiburg now. And I dare a West Ham fan, I double dare a West Ham fan to call in to the sports bar later and say Moy's out after that and ring Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy and have an issue with David Moyes having a... night like that Ray Houghton just quickly from you former West Ham player what a night for Moisey I've got, I've got it on my WhatsApp already Moise out Moise <laughs> 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 no listen I'm delighted for David and obviously the West Ham players they've been under a bit of criticism for the style of football that they've had recently but they've been getting results and sometimes that's what it's about you can't play well every game it is about winning you need a winning mentality and there's no secret you get the creative players back like Pakatar and you start playing more creative football yeah but people don't realise that they're not looking at that they, they want to be critical why aren't we playing like this all the time but yes. you're quite right there's certain players that make you tick and Pakatar is certainly that type of player and they perform to a really high level tonight I, I rang Jim up on the way up to the game tonight and I told him I think it'd be an easy game tonight and, oh I'm not so sure I think I was right <laughs> you could just tell I mean, there was something about the West Ham players and the focus their European runs been brilliant from last season to this they really enjoyed the competitions and the fans love it they love that they won a European trophy last season and they're happy enough that they're going to be into the last eight in this competition as well yeah West Ham 5-0 up on the night 5-1 on aggregate you can catch the closing stages of that match over on TalkSport 2 with Jim and Alan Pardew elsewhere in the Europa League Villarreal 3-0 up on Marseille so still Marseille are ahead but only by one goal Capu, Sorlot and Mosquera have got the three goals for the Spaniards AC Milan 3-0 up on Slavia Prague and Rangers still trailing we'll get back to Ibrox in just a moment and see whether they can finally get themselves an equaliser and force extra time because Benfica lead 3-2 on aggregate you're listening to kick-off on Talk Sport with Ladbrokes we play together terms and conditions apply it's 18 plus begambleaware.org kick-off on Talk Sport with Ladbrokes we play together terms and conditions apply 18 plus begambleaware.org it's almost Easter, so it's time to pick up some M&S Collection Easter eggs for the people you really like. For your favourite relative, perhaps the hand-decorated Belgian milk chocolate nutty egg? For the person you want to woo, the Belgian milk chocolate champagne egg with champagne truffles? Or, here's an idea, you could just buy one for yourself. I'm going to. These are not just Easter eggs. These are M&S Collection Easter eggs. Subject to availability, selected stores. MGM Sports and Casino. We know things aren't always golden. That's why we offer you the tools to keep your place safe. Set timeouts to always ensure you take a break when you feel like you need it. Set reality checks so you know exactly how long you've been playing. And set deposit limits to help control what you spend. Stay golden with BetMGM. Play responsibly. 18 plus at Honda. We've been engineering cars for over 70 Four. 75 years actually. We know that excellence takes time. So you can rely on the Honda engineering in the all new ENY1 with a range of up to 250 miles on a single charge and up to 5 years warranty, servicing and roadside assistance. Our first electric SUV, the ENY1. Oh, a hole in one. Yes. Honda, the power of dreams range based on test conditions and may vary. Ah, the Cheltenham Roar. The signal for four days of thrills and spills and hills. And it's a good bet you'll love Virgin Bet's Roaring Festival offer. It's money back as a free bet up to £5 if you lose the first race every day. And you're off! Start every day of the Cheltenham Festival with money back as a free bet up to £5 if you lose the first race. Virgin Bet, a good bet. Place bet within 48 hours of race. Main market, win part of each way bet. Max free bet, £5, valid seven days. T's and C's apply. 18 plus, bet responsibly, be gambleaware.org. At Continental Tyres, we've been championing women's football for over 13 years. For us, it's more than a game. It's a passion. Join us on the 31st of March at Molyneux Stadium, Wolverhampton, for the FA Women's Continental Tyres League Cup Final for a celebration of women's football. Continental Tyres, driving safety and performance. For tickets, head to wolves.co.uk forward slash tickets. 
Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've got it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Cheltenham to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. On 1089 and 1053 Medium Wave. Online, on your mobile, on the app, and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport. An important night of live European football here on Talk Sport. Tonight we're at Villa Park. 8 o'clock kickoff, Aston Villa against Ajax. 0 0 from the first leg in the Europa Conference League. Round of 16, second leg. Villa trying to fight on two fronts keep themselves in top four in the Premier League and get towards a European final there is that lovely legend written on a banner between the two tiers of the North Stand recounting Brian Moore's famous commentary from the win in Rotterdam against Bayern Munich that saw Villa lift the European Cup in the early 80s will we have a Jim Proudfoot commentary adorning the Holt end come May that recounts Villa's famous win in the Europa Conference League. When you've got a man like Unai Emery in charge, you wouldn't bet against it. That's coming up in less than half an hour's time. We'll also talk a bit more about the England squad and the key players in tonight's match. But first, let's get the sports headlines back at base with Mark Tyler. Talk Sport with Bostic. If you need a professional grey sealant with high mould resistance, easy tooling and minimal shrinkage, choose Bostic Pro Sealants. Good evening. Liverpool take a four-goal advantage into their Europa League last 16 second leg against Sparta, Prague at Anfield, while Brighton have to claw back a four-goal deficit against Roma at the Amex. It's goalless going into the second leg of Aston Villa's Conference League tie against Ajax. That's live here on TalkSport. The closing stages of West Ham Freiburg are over on TalkSport 2 right now. West Ham on course for a place in the quarterfinals. It's still not clear why Arsenal defender Ben White requested not to be part of Gareth Southgate's England squad for friendlies against Brazil and Belgium. And two winners for Sir Alex Ferguson on day three of the Cheltenham Festival and Harry Redknapp also had a winner. Shake him up, Harry, in the plate handicap chase. And we'll have live commentary of the Gold Cup tomorrow. Tomorrow afternoon from one. The going's good for an afternoon spectacular. Paul Horsby and Andy Jacobs live from Cheltenham on Top Sport. All the atmosphere direct from one of the highlights of the British racing calendar featuring big name guests, the latest odds and selected races from the festival. Here we go! Horsby and Jacobs, the odds on favourite in the afternoon. Live from the Cheltenham Festival. Tomorrow afternoon from one on Top Sport. This is Talk Sport, the world's biggest sports radio station. Ian Danter here at Villa Park. West Ham are through to the Europa League. Last eight, they have beaten Freiburg 5 0 live on Talk Sport 2 right now. Brilliant performance from Moyes, boys. Don't forget that you can react to that on the sports bar with Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy from 10 o'clock tonight. We've got Villa Ajax kicking off in less than half an hour here at Villa Park. 0 0 from the first leg. Let's get a quick team news recap ahead of kickoff with our match commentator, Joe Shannon. Four changes for Aston Villa from Sunday afternoon's defeat to Spurs here. Diego Carlos, Alex Moreno, Moussa Diaby, and Morgan Rogers, who started the first leg, all come in. Consa is suspended. Longley, Dean, and Tielemans are all on the bench. Martinez in goal. Cash, Diego Carlos, Pau Torres, and Moreno, the defenders. Bailey, McGinn, Louise, and Rogers in midfield. Watkins and Diaby up front for Ayer. Just one change for them from the first leg this time last week. Sutolo in for the suspended Goya. It's Ramai in goal. Wrench, Sutolo, Kaplan, Hato and Sosa in defence. Henderson and Mansberg in midfield. Linson, Taylor and Brobby are the front three. Thank you, Joe. Don't forget Brighton 4-0 down against Roma. That kicks off at 8. Liverpool 5-1 up against Sparta Prague. That also kicks off at 8. But coming to a close at Ibrox, Rangers are about to go out of Europe. Here's David Tanner. We're into the fifth minute of stoppage time here at Ibrox. It's Rangers nil, Benfica one, and the side from Lisbon are three-two up on aggregate. I can tell you that uh, Jack Butland, the Rangers goalkeeper, is just up in the, the uh, in the other goal mouth at the moment. He's now retracing his steps back to his own goal as uh, Benfica pick up the possession. Um, I can tell you that uh, it was Rafa Silva's goal on 67 minutes 
that has won this tie for Benfica unless Rangers with this final push up the park can manage to grab something but they lose out in possession and there goes the final whistle Rangers have been knocked out of the Europa League the road to Dublin ends early and in Govan as Rangers miss out on a place in the quarterfinals the goal that has knocked them out came in the middle of the second half it was scored by Rafa Silva it was the first time in this tie that the Portuguese side were ahead it came from a Rangers corner would you believe the ball was launched forward Rafa Silva ran through half the length of the pitch put the ball past Jack Butland the flag went up uh, but VAR spotted that in fact when Silva picked up the ball he was actually inside his own half that's how far he ran with the ball to put Rangers out of the Europa League they could have had a second goal shortly afterwards a corner kick uh, was thrown into the six yard box and Antonio Silva somehow hooked the ball uh, past the post would have been easier to score uh, John Lundstrom could have had an equaliser in the 85th minute but his shot was saved by An Anatoly Trubin so Rangers go out of Europe it's only the third time they've lost under Philippe Clément now they have to concentrate on their domestic treble bid they've got the League Cup in the bag already they're in the Scottish Cup semi-final and they are top of the SPFL but on a soaking wet pitch tonight they have tumbled out of Europe against a team that perhaps some of us might think they should have beaten it finished at Ibrox Rangers nil, Benfica won 3-2 on aggregate to the men from Lisbon. Big disappointment for Rangers, and that word coefficient swimming round my head as it always does at times like this when teams from Britain go out of Europe, whether it affects how many teams and how many places are available for teams in English and Scottish leagues in European competition next season. So, disappointing day for Jack Butland. Didn't make it into Gareth Southgate's England squad and Rangers out of Europe. Ray Houghton, let's talk about Jack Butland. Is he... Would he be right to feel a little aggrieved that he's not in Gareth's thoughts for this squad? Yeah, I mean, listen, whenever you're <clears throat> having a good season and you're playing well and you feel com confident, you always think you're in with your chance. But once again, you come back to, there's plenty of keepers plying their trade in the English Premier League and among English keepers that the manager can look at. And he's he can only pick three, really, can he? You know, when you're looking at the, the depth of the squad. So, yeah, there's always going to be someone who's unhappy that they've been left out. But you can't feel sorry for yourself, Ian. That's the most important thing. Keep plugging away. Keep doing what you've been good at. And hopefully, it can, you, as I said, you've got between now and the end of the season to showcase yourself, mm -hmm. what you're about as an individual, how you know, adversity is not going to affect you. You're going to come out and say, right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to play even better. That's what I'm going to do to make force my way into your thoughts when it comes to picking your Euro squad. Um, then it's the same with the outfield players. There'll be some players that are unhappy. They're not in the, uh, the, the, the squad at the moment. And all you can do is play well for your team. And then that's when the manager will come and look at you and make the decision. Well, I guess the headline of those players who haven't made the squad is Calvin Phillips. But again, that's no great surprise. No, no surprise it? at the moment. I mean, Calvin's struggling for fitness and he's been struggling for a little while. This isn't something new. And there's other players that have gone ahead of him. You know, in the way that uh, England played, do you really need two deep line midfielders? Probably not. You know, uh, as I said, England, in the majority of the time that they play, will have more possession of the ball. So you're looking for number eights and number tens that can play in them positions. A number six, you know, you can get involved in the build-up play. You know, affording them playing in that position. You know, Madison, who I'm a, honestly, he's, he's turned my head, Madison, since he moved from Leicester to, to Tottenham Hotspur. I think he's a much better uh, individual and he's a leader. He's someone who always wants the ball. I didn't see it in Leicester way. No, cocky as well, isn't it? In a good well, I way. I don't mind that. I don't yeah. mind that. It's not, it's not arrogance, but it's, it's, it's assurance. He's, he's, he's assured of his ability. I actually like that. So the way that England are going to play, you know, you've got enough t quality players. You don't always need the deep line ones. Where I think England might just need a, some help is in the centre of the defence. I think that might just be a slight weakness. They haven't got enough depth in that, them positions. One of the other headlines from Gareth Southgate's squad selection was the absence of the Arsenal defender Ben White. Here is Southgate on why the Arsenal fullback was not named in his latest squad. John McDermott had a call from Edu last week to say that Ben didn't want to be considered um, for England squads at this time. Um, for me, that's a great shame. Um, he's a player I really like. He's a player that we took to a Euros when he was at Brighton, a player that we took to the World Cup. I spoke to him post-Qatar because um, I was keen to pick him, and there was clearly 
um, reticence from on his side. I don't, I don't know fully why that is, um, but I have to respect that. I want to leave the door open for him because he's a good player, and I think he's a player that can make a difference for England. Um, but he's not available to us, um, and so the only other thing I would say is there is no. Um, issue between us at all I don't buy that Ray Houghton there's something going on there between somebody in the England management setup and Ben White which has meant that this this impasse is still there yeah there's, there, there is obviously a problem the fact that he's said that he doesn't want to be part of the squad you know that's, that's evident uh, we don't know we're not privy to exactly what's no. going on as but, far but as when Gareth says he doesn't know I don't believe him well okay that's fair enough and that's his prerogative to mm. tell the, what he, the story that he wants to tell at the moment you know he doesn't want to fall out with Ben White you know he wants to as he said leave the door open in case something comes in the next few weeks and maybe he needs them but there's enough players who can play in that position you know Trent Alexander-Arnold is one of the best uh, players in, in world football maybe not defensively at times but when he becomes as an inverted midfielder comes in for the fullback position he's as good as anyone in world football in that position in my opinion Kyle Walker's been absolutely outstanding you know he, he's a great defender uh, you know he, he gets on the cover it may be that Gareth thinks of Kyle in a three that's how I got you know because you're not always going to play a 4-3-3 yeah, there's times you're going to have to change your formation yeah, bearing in mind who you're playing against what their strengths so you can't just go with the same makeup all the time that's not going to work you have to be flexible and I think Gareth will be and he has shown that over the, his tenure as manager of England when he's changed the, the system around and he might play Kyle in a, a, a centre back position in a three uh, and then he'd be looking for maybe a right sided player and Ben White might be that type Ben's in a good season you know I've watched him with, Ar with Arsenal he dovetails well with Saka Saka and him get on brilliantly they know each other's game inside out but you can't force someone to play it's as simple as that if he doesn't want to play at the moment you've just got to use the players that do want to who want to be part of your squad who want to be part of the England setup at the moment you've got to give them their opportunity and it, that's the way it is that's and what happens in football just finally on England before we move back to this game tonight kicking off in court for now here at Villa Park Villa Ajax live on Talk Sport a couple of individuals in the squad for different reasons that I'm delighted to see Gerard Branthwaite's been given a call up I think he's been smashing for Everton all season and there's the Ivan Tony conundrum. Now he's back involved. I wonder how many minutes he might get against Brazil and or Belgium. Well, listen, he's a different type, isn't he, Tony? You know, I've watched him a couple of times recently for Brentford. And the Brentford team have been struggling. Struggling to create chances, score goals. But they're working hard. I've been impressed with him. I think he's came back. I think he's led the line well. He holds the ball up. He's, he's aggressive. He's strong. He's good in the air. So he's, different, he's got different attributes and different. he's a different option to what England have got. And I think they'll need that. Because there's going to be times in games you've got to throw the ball into the box you know you might be 1-0 down 10 minutes to go you can't keep playing your way through if it hasn't worked for 80 minutes you've got to change your tactics you've got to change your way you're playing and you might have to go a little bit more direct and that's where Tony could give you an, uh, an outlet and, and get you the goals but listen Gareth has got a lot of bases covered he's been around the England setup for a long time now he's got them to a final he's got them to a semi-final of the World Cup he knows what big tournaments are like he knows how to manage them let him get on with the job of managing it with the players that he's got it's always going to up, you're always going to upset the fans because players at your team aren't getting into the squad that's the very nature uh, of what being an England manager about you can only pick 23 whatever the number of the squad is mm. and you're going to leave some players out and that's going to be uh, going to be difficult for the manager at that time well I'll have a good look at Ivan Tony myself on Saturday afternoon because our Talk Sport 2 Saturday 3 o'clock commentary is up at Turf Moor Burnley against Brentford both sides in pretty wretched form League form wise, but will Tony get back amongst the goals again up in Lancashire? That's part of our weekend with FA Cup and Premier League commentaries and Champions. Your goodness me, the South Wales Derby Saturday lunchtime on Talk Sport 2 should be an absolute belter as well. But it's European football tonight, just over 10 minutes to kick off before our full commentary here on Talk Sport of Aston Villa against Ajax. You're listening to Villa Ajax in the Europa Conference League on TalkSport supported by TNT Sports. Don't forget you can watch tonight's games and all the Europa League action live only on TA TNT Sports. We're back shortly. Kick off on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus be gambleaware.org. Hayes Catering is a small company run by two brothers selling food at festivals across the UK. But when COVID struck, the plug was pulled on live events. To help fill the gap, Barclays provided them with a loan so they could diversify their business. 
And now that live music is back, so are Hayes Catering. Grow your business. Bank on Barclays. Search Barclays Business Banking. Ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to chop down. In the left corner, undefeated since 2016, the Titan of the Turf, Ireland. In the right corner, the hometown hero, Britain. Yes, the greatest rivalry in racing is ready to resume at Cheltenham. And it's bound to be a knockout. Whatever happens, Paddy Power will be in your corner. Weighing in with great offers throughout the festival on the Paddy Power app. Paddy Power, let's get ready to Cheltenham! Season C's apply. 18 plus, At Tesco Mobile, we're putting your contract price on ice. So right now, you can get this unlimited data sim for just £20 a month with club card prices, saving you £120. That's value frozen in. Plus, we'll throw in £30 worth of club card points too. This is Supermarket Mobile. Search Tesco Mobile. Every little helps. Ends 24th of March. Club card and 24-month credit agreement required. Subject to status. Value issued at 3,000 club card points. Terms at tescomobile.com slash terms. Here they are, the racing lovers of the UK, phone in hand, ready to play the Coral Reward Shaker. Look at them shake. We've got the regulars at the race course shaking their phone with confidence. And look, they've won a free bet. Parents on a day out just happy to be here. They've done it too. An odds booster for them. Lovely stuff. Everyone's a winner. Play Coral's free reward shaker this Cheltenham to win guaranteed daily rewards and offers. Coral, we're here for it. 18 plus UK. Max one reward or offer per player per day. Reward restrictions, requirements and T's and C's apply. Take time to think. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? Well, here's one for you. Switching to an energy-efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy-saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. Nothing beats the Cheltenham. It's the top jockeys, the top horses. He's coming home strong up the hill. A roar for that first race. Unbelievable. And they're off. Bet Fred this Cheltenham and get an offer on every race. Four days of world-class racing. I love the festival. It's the best jumps racing on the planet. Love Cheltenham. Bet Fred. Minimum of one offer per race at Cheltenham. Valid between 12th and 15th of March 2024. Teen seats apply. Available in store and online. Office may vary. 18 plus began with the word org. Glory, despair, triumph. Fantastic strike. The Europa Conference League Live. Brilliant reaction. On Talk Sport. Job done for Unai Emery. The favourites are off to a flyer in the Europa Conference League. I haven't won a trophy in um, 27 years since 1996. I'm going to say Europa League Conference is the priority for me. Conference League, contender a trophy. To try to get Europe League, try to get Champions League is my my first objective here with Aston Villa. When we look at this tie, Villa Park under the lights would be a brilliant Thursday night, I, I think. And it's clear that Aston Villa are far superior. Hawkins inside the six yard box has scored for Aston Villa. That ball goes past one, finds a bottom corner. That's a brilliant finish. This is far from a decent Ajax side, even though. Um, they've improved under John Van Schip. Now is the is a is a key moment and it's a very good opportunity. If we can tomorrow play thinking to to beat uh, Ajax. That's Unai Emery, the Aston Villa manager. We are less than ten minutes away from kickoff live on Talksport here at Villa Park, where we've been treated to a right old light show. You normally get the thing now where. They managed to dim the floodlights and have a little chase light ceremony, but something brilliant that I've not seen before. Obviously, if you signed up to the Aston Villa app on your phone, everyone was holding their phones up and they've all pulsed in time with the music. Lights flickering all around the stadium. I thought that was quite effective, Ray Howe. Yeah, it was, but I've got to tell you, I'm not happy. I'm okay, not happy. I'll tell you why. Spill the beans. Quickly. There's a big Jumbotron telly over. I've been watching it for the last 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. Goals galore going in. Not one of mine. I scored one of the biggest goals in the UEFA Cup against Inter Milan, which got us to penalty kicks when Phil King got the winning penalty. Not even seen it yet. Are they sure there were cameras there? But the, the, the camera had been invented at that yeah, point. Yeah, it was in yeah. black and white. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they they shouldn't, seen it. Oh, they shouldn't show that Gary Cahill goal against Birmingham. I mean, that that's a crime. But can you just say though, what a fantastic atmosphere in the yeah. stadium. They, you know, it's virtually full. There's a little area where maybe not all the Ajax fans have turned up, but great isn't it great for a club like Villa for, to have a night like this a noise in the stadium and, and the another, support from the, the another, support. another club fighting over the uh, the rights to use Jeff Beck's high ho silver lining Sheffield Wednesday use it Wolverhampton Wanderers use it 
and Villa are using it tonight and it's having the desired effect there are giant flags that are about 20 foot in diameter some saying up the Villa all about to be flown at the whole 10 quite similar to those flags they have at Arsenal that they fly behind the goals at the clock end and the north bank so what do you reckon Ray what's going to be the key to that because Jordan Henderson is clearly Ajax's key to make them tick in midfield John McGinn let himself down badly here on Sunday against Tottenham Hotspur with a reckless challenge yeah yeah, yeah. and he'll know that but still have to start quickly take the game to the opposition you know Joe and I were going through the, the Ajax team there's a lot of youngsters there how are they going to handle this atmosphere how are they going to handle this occasion yep. because these are two big European teams aren't they alright they might have been out of for, for a long period but they have got pedigree from years gone by Ajax and, and certainly Aston Villa and both sets of supporters are coming here in the belief that they can win and get through to the last eight of this competition which will be huge it'll be huge for both these sides but only one can do it and I fancy my old club Villa I just think because of the way that they've played and the form that they've shown here this season after that defeat on Sunday against Tottenham I think they'll be ready for tonight I think they'll be ready from minute one when they employed Unai Emery I have to admit as a fan of the club from across the city, Ray, I thought, I'm worried here. This bloke's going to win them what's something. The, what team's that? <laughs> oh, just small Heath, apparently, they're known around these parts. <laughs> there are fireworks going off now all around the top of the stadium. They really are going for it with a pre-match entertainment. See, I, I think, I think it's practice. the right way to do it. Really get the fans involved. Yeah. You know, the, the fans are loving it. And then but, they're ready for the kickoff now. But Unai Emery, a serial winner of European trophies. I mean maybe he, he could go all the way this year with yeah. this Villa team yeah listen, every chance he can do that but he'll just be hopeful to get through tonight yeah. you know he, 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 he would be been unhappy with the performance on Sunday you know Sunday went 1-0 down he looked like they were second best all over the park and he, that's not like Emery you know he doesn't want that from his team he wants them to be competitive he wants them to have a good attitude attack the game in the right way and I think you're going to see a different Aston Villa side against Ajax tonight I'll tell you what there's more pyrotechnics and flamethrowers than I saw in the KISS concert at Madison Square Garden back in December. This is ridiculous. They are really going for it. The Aston Villa staff here to make this a really intimidating atmosphere. The Ajax fans have got their red and white flags out opposite us. According to Alex Crook, our colleague down at the Amex, they're playing the great escape on the PA before kickoff, before Brighton play Roma. They're 4-0 down. Teams on their way out here at Villa Park remember this tie was nil-nil after a cagey first leg a week ago in Amsterdam couple of late red cards that deprives Villa of Ensry concert tonight at the back but Villa have got more than enough quality to see this round of 16 tie through against Ajax who have a great European pedigree but are not having a great domestic season by their lofty standards whole game coming up live here on Talk Sport, alongside the former Villa midfielder Ray Houghton, is your Talk Sport match commentator Joe Shannon. Thanks, Ian. Good evening, everyone. Both sets of players line up either side of the halfway line as the Europa Conference League anthem rings around Villa Park, which really was made for nights like this. The whole end roar will spur on Aston Villa in their first European last 16 tie in over two decades and Brian Moore's famous commentary of Peter Wynn's winner in the 1982 European Cup final is displayed on a long banner in the North Stand. That a reminder of glorious European nights of the past for Aston Villa and the class of 2024 have the chance to create their own history this year. Another European giant stands in their way of further Conference League progress but this isn't a vintage Ajax side by any means. As Ian was saying, the first leg in Amsterdam was cagey. It ended goalless, so the second is set up perfectly here on Talk Sports. Some of that acrid smoke from the fireworks and the light show pre-match still lingering in the air. It's relatively mild. It has been wet in the build-up. There's still some rain teeming down from the dark skies up ahead. This famous old ground is packed tonight, Ray Houghton, and we're really looking yeah, forward to it. Yeah, I've got to say, I, I think a little bit of rain that we had had Joel really help the players you know you don't have to watch every game I've gone to recently you know they've been watering the pitch it doesn't matter how much rain they've had they've still been watering the pitch because the pitch is a lot firmer now than they used to be so you have to get some water on the surface but it looks absolutely in pristine condition so neither side will be bothered with the rain that, that we've had in Birmingham in the last couple of hours it looks beautiful so the players will be really looking forward to it 
and this is about seizing the moment you know opportunities and nights like this don't always come around for clubs like these two at the moment they used to quite quite often but that isn't the case at the moment because of where they are so this is a real opportunity for one of these sides to go through to a quarter finals of a European competition there's a mass of photographers pitch side and the pre-match photos which are traditional for European ties have taken place as well Holt enders in the sky rings around Villa Park and I can see the Ajax fans on the far side they're occupying uh, two tiers of the Doug Ellis stand waving their red and white flags they've been in the ground since before we got here in fact as I was walking up to the stadium earlier they were already going in it's going to be a frenetic and raucous atmosphere no doubt I'll give you the two teams, Aston Villa, Martinez in goal, Cash, Diego Carlos, Pau Torres and Moreno, Bailey, McGinn, Luiz and Rogers, Watkins and Diaby up front. And the first thing that Ajax have done is they've won the toss and they've changed ends. So Villa will play from left to right towards the Holt end in the first half, that could be significant. Ajax have Ramai in goal, Sutalo, Kaplan and Hato the centre-halves, Wrench and Sosa the wing-backs, Jordan Henderson and Sivert Mansverk in midfield, Linson and Taylor either side of Brobby up front. Aston Villa, the clout in blue shirts, white shorts and blue socks. Ajax all in black tonight. The referee is Aurel Grinfeld and the second leg here in the second city. Two sides with a rich European history and tonight a place in the Europa League quarter-finals at stake. Aston Villa against Ajax with the aggregate score nil-nil and the road to Athens continues tonight. So Aston Villa hope. The referee blows his whistle and Ajax playing from right to left get the second leg off and underway. High ball downfield immediately towards the far side the right and Brian Brobby, Alex Moreno is there for Aston Villa but he can't clear and Helinson bursts down the far side, the Icelander tackle comes in on that far side from Diego Carlos and that's a throw to Ajax deep inside opposition territory right in front of the away supporters who are swaying in tandem on the far side of the field so nil-nil on the night nil-nil in the tie as the ball is scooped into the Aston Villa penalty area it'll bounce away for a goal kick to Aston Villa well if the kick offs anything to go by Joe they're going to be very <laughs> direct uh, Ajax this evening because as soon as they they took the, the kick off Sosa just delivered the ball over to the far side to where Broby was so they obviously tried to utilise his strength in the air whereas we see Aston Villa they're going to be a lot more patient than the build up passing it through the thirds whether it's wrapped up in 90 minutes after extra time or on penalties we'll have every kick for you here as the big defender in the middle of that trio of centre halves for Ajax Kaplan sends it high and long up towards the halfway line and the ball bounces out of play for an Ajax throw right in between the two head coaches Unai Emery four times a UEFA Europa League champion of course and to his right the Ajax boss John Van Schip not a vintage Ajax team this good ball forward though for them by Taylor towards the corner of the penalty area and the onrushing skipper Jordan Henderson Ajax wanted a free kick in the build up referee played the advantage Ajax throw right in front of our commentary position which is level with the edge of the 18 yard box so halfway inside the half to the left as we look at it and Bailey right in front of us skipping forward elegantly towards the halfway line and he threads the ball into the feet of Diaby Diaby drives down the right hand side away from Hato the Villa fans up to their feet already low ball in towards Rogers at the near post steered away by Sutalo out of play for a Villa throw two minutes gone nil nil on aggregate well, great piece of play on this right hand side by Bailey the way he just oh. played the past two or three of the Ajax players with such ease and as he played the ball down to Diaby down this right hand side he tried to play it in across the six yard box and it was Rogers who made a run from the left hand side across uh, the back four of Ajax he just couldn't get uh, his run quite right to get his strike at goal that misty rain still fizzing through the air we've got the talk sport umbrella Ray if we, if we need it later and here is Pau Torres just shy of the halfway line for Aston Villa back to Diego Carlos and now Cash in the right back position Unai Emery with his dark suit on pointing the way forward for McGinn from the centre circle lovely floated pass up the inside right channel Diaby will chase it beats Sosa the wing back to the ball easily lays it back to Bailey on the corner of the penalty area now Bailey heads for the dead ball line Villa from left to right towards the Holt end in the first half after Ajax won the toss and decided to change ends and now Diego Carlos just inside opposition territory out to the right and cash again 
Aston Villa looking for a fast start after a first leg light on chances. High ball from Bailey up towards Watkins in the penalty area. It's steered upfield by Divine Wrench for Ajax. Yes, they've done well on this right hand side between uh, Bailey and Diaby, but when they've got to deliver the ball in, because Bailey's come short as well to get involved in the build up play, when the ball's delivered in there, they're isolating Watkins on his own. That, that's where Rogers, and he's quite a tall lad when you look at him, well over six foot, he's got to make the run from the left hand side as he did a little bit earlier but he's got to do that more consistently to make that extra man in the box to help out Watkins Morgan Rogers, the 21 year old who joined for Middlesbrough at the start of February the top scorer in the League Cup this season remember Borough had the run to the semi-finals and he's very highly rated at Aston Villa he started the first leg that was his first start for Aston Villa and his second comes tonight in the second leg there's barely an empty seat tonight at Villa Park with the floodlights on Martinez, the Villa goalkeeper, has the ball. Nil-nil on the night and on aggregate. Aston Villa in the last 16 of a UEFA competition for the first time in 21 years when they went on to reach the semi-finals of the Intertoto Cup. Scoop forward by Pau Torres to the halfway line. Little flick by Watkins, but it's brought down neatly by the giant Mansverk in the middle of midfield, the Norwegian for Ajax. And they play the ball back to goalkeeper Ramai, who's given it straight to Watkins. Watkins' touch is heavy, and Ramai gets very fortunate. The ball goes out of play. Goal kick to Ajax, Ray Halt. Ah, it was a big chance there, wasn't it, Joe? Oh. Ramai with a really poor ball out. Tried to play it out to his right hand side, played it straight to Watkins, and his touch was so heavy. He took it out for a goal kick. If he caught that a lot closer to him, he could have taken on and had a shot himself. He had an option. I think it was either Diaby or Bailey coming in from that right hand side. That was a let off. It's a very young Ajax side. Classic, I suppose, in the in the way that Ajax sides are. Average age of just over 22. And Ramai is a relatively inexperienced goalkeeper, the German. Sosa for Ajax in the left wing back position. And then Kaplan wins the throw. Off the onrushing Bailey, Aston Villa fans applaud the press. Well, you can see they look a bit edgy at the moment, Joe, can't you? They've given the ball away in, in dangerous areas. We've seen that with the goalkeeper making a mistake in there. Catlin tried to play his way out. He's a little bit fortunate to play it off the Aston Villa player and got a throw in for it. But when they play it long, they look far more comfortable. When they try to pass out from the back, they just look edgy. They're underway at Anfield and at the Amex elsewhere. We'll keep you up to date on Talk Sport. Brighton have an almost impossible task. 4-0 down after the first leg defeat to Roma and Liverpool 5-1 winners in Prague they named a very strong team tonight Jurgen Klopp for the second leg at Anfield Liverpool 5-1 up on aggregate the ball is with Ajax on the halfway line and the booze for Jordan Henderson who has been named in the England squad again Anthony Gordon and Jared, Jared Branthwaite giving their first call-ups Joe Gomez is back in the squad no Calvin Phillips the England friendlies to come against Brazil and Belgium will be live on Talk Sport over the international break Aston Villa have possession inside the centre circle. There's a goal at Anfield. Talk Sports, Mark Wilson. Yeah, if it wasn't over already, Joe, it is now. Liverpool won, Sparta Prague, now a lovely team move down the right hand side. Darwin Nunes hit a double in the first leg, tucked in from 12 yards out. Liverpool won, Sparta Prague, nil. Nil nil here, Aston Villa against Ajax in the second leg. This tie, of course, so much more finely poised, and there's quite a nervy atmosphere maybe at Villa Park at the moment six and a half minutes gone yeah just ball went out he might catch in the right back position and he was looking for Diaby to come short because Bailey made a run in behind uh, the, the the wing back at the moment Sosa is actually going back as a left back at the moment he's not playing as a left wing back higher up the field he's, his job is to man mark by the looks of things Bailey over on the side of the field Diaby's the one that's able to get free and you know, between the midfield and the uh, the back line of Ajax and that uh, could be a crucial area of the field for them West Ham through earlier in the Europa League 5-0 winners over Freiburg on Talk Sport 2 Rangers are out after being beaten on aggregate by Benfica Aston Villa on the attack on the near side the right with Bailey trying to play the ball in field the reverse pass to Cash <laughs> cleared away by Sosa and throw to Aston Villa that's Rami again isn't it with another poor clearance wasn't yeah. it? a little pass back out uh, to this left hand side and virtually played it to an Aston Villa player again Ray Houghton has played and scored many a goal at Villa Park at his time played and scored at Anfield of course many a time in the past as well there's another goal there Mark Wilson yeah first senior goal for Bobby Clark the teenager took it in straight from the kick off disaster at the back for Sparta Prague and Clark took home Liverpool 2 Sparta Prague 0 Bobby Clark who is the son of Lee Clark formerly of Newcastle and Fulham so Liverpool now 7-1 up on aggregate against Sparta Prague and 
that of course in the Europa League our focus tonight in our live commentary is on the Europa Conference League Aston Villa nil, Ajax nil on the night and on aggregate as well two players sent off one for each team in the first leg in Amsterdam last week Konza and Goya neither of whom were involved tonight of course as the two number sixes Henderson and Douglas Luiz go head to head midway inside the Aston Villa half Henderson comes off the better and wins Ajax a throw on the far side well of the field. just wrench the right wing back got forward there but he's not even looking to play the ball in because he had options Hilton had made a good run from midfield and Brobby had got in behind the back line so he just needed the ball delivered in instead he went backwards and played it short to Jordan Henderson he got in and blocked tackle with Douglas Luiz Salford 1, Stockport 0 is the latest score in League 2 Luke Garbutt has got the Salford goal Stockport could go joint top of League 2 with a win tonight but behind early on to Salford City Ajax meanwhile have possession with the giant and slender Kaplan in the middle of the three centre-halves the square ball out to the left and the 18-year-old Hato who chips it high downfield up towards Kenneth Taylor the number 8 Taylor who scored a number of important European goals for Ajax this season but he can't keep the ball in play for the four times uh, European Cup winners and it's out of play for an Aston Villa throw he's an interesting player Taylor isn't he you know I've, I've watched him on, the, on occasions and he holds on to the ball very well and he's got an eye for goal too and now Ajax on the attack on the far side there right with Wrench the wing back back to Henderson lovely ball that from Henderson crossfield right to left it just spun off the slippery surface evaded Taylor but it's kept in play by Sosa on the near side of the field Taylor led with the edge of the 18 yard box Aston Villa nil Ajax nil on aggregate and we're in the 10th minute live on Talk Sport. Ajax have possession with Henderson in the centre circle again and Ajax still look a potential threat here Hato's been forced to go back to the halfway line it's raining goals tonight at Anfield Mark Wilson it is Liverpool 3 Sparta Prague nil. most of the last 20th of the season Sparta Prague trying to play out from the back with disastrous consequences Salah tucks in from the edge of the area Liverpool 3 Sparta Prague nil. and so 8-1 to Liverpool on aggregate in the last 16 of the Europa League still Brighton nil, Roma nil in the second leg at the Amex Roma 4-0 up on aggregate there and a yellow card out of the pocket of the referee in the direction of Morgan Rogers for a late tackle yeah he was a late tackle on Broby he looked late as well you could see him listen, doing his level bed but his studs were up as well you just got to be careful when you're going to make a challenge he's just intimating to the referee he went for the ball and there's no question that he did Joe but his foot was up and you've got to be careful when your studs are showing and that's what the referee's seen. He's seen Broby go to ground, and that's why he gave Rodgers the yellow card. It could be a good night for two of your old clubs tonight, Ray. Well, it certainly will be for Liverpool, who are warming up for the FA Cup quarter final against Manchester United on Sunday, live and exclusive on Talk Sport. Ajax now on the attack, far side with Wrench. Corner of the penalty area. Wrench drives infield the wing back. He lays it back towards Mansberg. First time low shot is so easy for Martinez, but he almost collapsed onto that. The goalkeeper was on target. Motion. <laughs> was and I think it might have been <laughs> dragged wide. Will it, will it go down as a shot on target or not I mean the build up play was <laughs> decent from Ajax they were actually getting themselves into the game they're a bit more confidence about their general play they look better when they're higher up the field and they're passing it Jordan Henderson nearly got Taylor in with a lovely ball over the top and that's where Aston Villa have to be much more assured in, in the defensive uh, duties where they don't switch off it is McGinn tenaciously driving forward for Aston Villa into the opposition territory looks to knock it forward 10 yards towards the right and the onrushing Bailey sliding in his Sosa and it's out of play for an Aston Villa throw 10 yards into the Ajax half nil nil yeah you're just looking at Unai Emery in his technical area he's not happy how uh, Aston Villa are passing him he thinks it's too slow he's just said to Matty Cash come on get on the ball quicker do it you know even that throw and get it back to Carlos and let's get on the attack quicker and I think it stems from the keeper I, I think Martinez the keeper's taking too long you know, he's, 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 he's having three and four touches because he's waiting for something to happen and then he's just hit a, a nameless ball downfield not picking out any of his teammates just wasteful well, form at Villa Park has been a struggle for Aston Villa of late Unai Emery out to the edge of the technical area beyond the not technical happy, area he's, he's, he's not fuming happy, he's fuming at the moment because I, that's what I would say with Aston Villa at the moment they've, they've been a little bit too passive going to close down um, they could do that a lot higher up the pitch because as we said about Ajax they look a bit edgy at defensively with the goalkeeper Ramai the goalkeeper hoists the ball high downfield up towards the halfway line headed forward by Cash for Aston Villa it'll drop on the halfway line towards McGinn who has to use his physicality to shrug aside Taylor foul by Taylor and a free kick to Aston Villa on the halfway line that elicits ironic cheers 
from the home fans. Maccabi Tel Aviv nil, Olympiakos won elsewhere in the uh, Conference League tonight. Daniel Pedenz, formerly of Wolves, has got that Olympiakos goal, but they are still 4-2 down on aggregates. Another goal at Anfield. Which way this time, talk sports, Mark Wilson? It's Liverpool 4, Sparta Prague 0. Sparta being ripped apart here. Now it's Cody Gakpo who tucks in after Salah wins the ball high up the field. This is an absolute demolition job. 9-1 on aggregate on the night. Liverpool 4, Sparta Prague 0. At what point will Liverpool declare? And Sparta Prague in desperate trouble. Now then, free kick to Aston Villa and a yellow card from Mansfield. This free kick midway inside the Ajax half. The sprightly Diaby was tripped. The long leg of Mansfield sliding in and he missed time. The chatting yeah, well, he's, he's, he's pleading his case that he didn't touch him. I think he went in initially and pulled out of it. Just, we were just looking at the replay again. He went. He's I, nowhere near the ball. He didn't catch. The, you're, you're quite right. He didn't get the ball and he did catch Diaby. He's not too happy because he felt that um, Diaby made an awful lot of it, but he certainly looked a fair and it looked like a yellow card as well. A million miles away from the ball with a lunge from Mansfield. We've got a little monitor in the commentary Where, position where's, here. Where's Diaby going now at the moment? Can you see him? He's virtually going on to the goal line. Well, he's... In starting position. He's about... 20 yards offside Diaby standing on the goal line next to the goalkeeper Ramai the whole tend is up to its feet here still scoreless in the turn the last 16 of the Europa Conference League live on Talk Sport Aston Villa nil Ajax nil Bailey will whip this in high left footed bounces towards the far post nobody can get the vital touch sliding in was Alex Moreno there was too much on the delivery from Bailey and it's out of play for a goal kick to Ajax I thought it was a lovely ball in you sumptuous ball in there it looked like Moreno felt he might catch the goalkeeper and I think that's why he just pulled out the last minute he probably realised he wasn't going to get there I'm not sure if he injured himself he wasn't too happy as he went back into his full back position but I thought it was a lovely ball in in a really good area Ramai nearly oh. caught out again he was caught late by the tackle of Watkins sliding in the goalkeeper Ramai's touch was initially very heavy I and Watkins actually has come off worse yeah, after that challenge it looks that way Joe doesn't it he's just holding his left knee at the moment he looks in absolute agony Ollie Watkins and Watkins will have to be treated here so the game is stopped Villa nil Ajax nil quarter of an hour gone on Talk Sport earlier West Ham through in the second leg 5-0 in the second leg against Freiburg live on TalkSport 2 so a 5-1 win on aggregate for David Moyes' team Rangers nil, Benfica 1 so Rangers bow out 3-2 on aggregate raining goals at Anfield Liverpool 4-0 up against Sparta Prague already 9-1 up on aggregate are uh, Jurgen Klopp's team and Brighton of course face something of a, a mission impossible a, a very difficult task tonight 4-0 down from the first leg against Roma how's the second leg started on the south coast talk sports Alex Crook well it's still Brighton nil, Roma nil, but no surprise the home side are the ones on the front foot we've already seen Lewis Dunk head across the face of goal from a corner Dunk has also slammed a free kick into the wall on the edge of the penalty area one chance with the visitors it was Sada Asmoon dragging his shot wide after a loose Simon Adingra pass Brighton nil, Roma nil, still 4-0 to the visitors on aggregate and Ollie Watkins still receiving treatment here after what was a poor challenge sliding in on the goalkeeper Ramai who's fine he caught him didn't he he, he absolutely caught him and right was like, he caught him low initially and then his foot came back up and caught him again I'm not sure if it was his leg got caught on the ground and that's why he's got the problem that he has but uh, certainly if he was to go off that would be a massive blow for Aston Villa well when he gets up Ollie Watkins he's going to be booked the whole tend is singing his name Yuri Tielemans is among those warming up in front of us here on the near side touchline, so goalless. Do you know, I'm not sure the referee actually seen it because he allowed play to continue initially, didn't he? Because the ball was played downfield and then he pulled it up a little bit after that. As if he maybe got confirmation that it was a problem with the... Initially, he thought it might have been the goalkeeper, but obviously it wasn't. It was Watkins who went to ground. But the keeper took that extra touch and that's why Watkins thought he could get there to get the block in. But he got there a little bit later as the keeper was about to clear it downfield and certainly caught him. It'll definitely be a yellow card for Watkins oh, no, when he does. You can see the yellow in his hand feet. already. Yeah, he's, he's holding the yellow card, isn't he, the referee? You're with Talk Sport online on DAB, DAB Plus, 1089, 10.53am on your smart speaker or via our app. Make sure you download, download our app. It's free and easy to get hold of. We're the only national radio station with commentary of all four FA Cup quarter-final ties this weekend. So on Saturday, Wolves against Coventry and Manchester City against Newcastle on Sunday, Chelsea against Leicester and then Manchester United against Liverpool, which is live and exclusive to national radio with us. 
Burnley against Brentford in the Premier League at three on Saturday. That's on Talk Sport 2. And there are only nine games to go in the EFL season. What a season it is in the Championship in particular. And we've got the South Wales derby for you on uh, Talk Sport 2 on Sunday. Swansea against Cardiff. We are home of the EFL. And we've got the playoffs to come as well. What a season it is. As Watkins gets to his feet, he gingerly walks beyond the dead ball line. Still his name is being sung. Is he going to be OK to carry on? Yeah, I think he, he looks is, like it. He's just behind the goal at the moment. He's just having a little jog just to test it out. I mean, the medical staff will have a good look at him just to make sure everything's OK. Because it's not just about tonight. It's about the remains and fixtures that Aston Villa have got as well. He's been such a key player for the club. And the game is back off and underway. Aston Villa temporarily down to 10 men. Aston Villa nil, Ajax nil in a stop-start second leg of this Conference League round of 16 tie. Nil-nil on aggregate. Watkins waits to get the go-ahead to come back on. So it's Ajax with a man advantage and in possession with Henderson, the number six. Jordan Henderson's long ball up the inside right channel. Linson will chase. Alex Moreno is there and he'll let the ball trickle behind and out of play for a goal I, kick to Villa and Martinez. I think they need to do that a little bit more though, Ajax. They've been playing in front of Aston Villa so, so often, you know, little balls into the front man back, playing between the midfield players. There's occasions, Joe, when you've got to stretch the opposition, you know, little balls over the top, make them face their own goal, and then they've got a decision what they do in possession. They'll go back to the keeper to the, put it out for a throw-in, but you're trying to win the ball much higher up the pitch. Watkins is back on the field. Rapturous applause from the home fans. Here's Cash in the right-back position for Aston Villa. Ball squared infield to Douglas Luiz. Neat touch onto Diaby, who flicks it towards the halfway line. Can't find Watkins, though. Kaplan is there for Ajax, and then he's blocked off by Douglas Luiz. Kaplan went down in a heap on the halfway line, and the referee blows the whistle he's for an Ajax free He's a little bit lucky there, Kaplan, because he took an yeah. extra touch. And I think it was Diaby that took him in initially, and I think that was where the, the first foul came, and he sort of fell into Douglas Luiz, which the referee already seen... Uh, the first incident with Diaby going in, making the challenge on him. Rain has stopped here. Very slick surface, quite a mild night in Birmingham. Here is Henderson on the halfway line for Ajax, getting the boos from the Aston Villa supporters. And now Sutalo, the right-sided centre-half, square to Kaplan. They look vulnerable through the middle tonight, Ajax. Soft centre with Kaplan and the goalkeeper. Kaplan's nearly given it away there. Watkins closing down, it took a ricochet off his boot and Ajax fortunate as Henderson belts the ball clear to the halfway line and here's the number nine, Brobic. nil nil on the night and nil nil on aggregate on Talk Sport. Borna Sosa to the corner of the penalty area, chips in the cross to the far post, looping header up into the air by Moreno and it's gathered high above his head by the goalkeeper Martinez. Well there you go, that was much better when it was just a long ball played downfield, they won the initial ball, they got it over to this left-hand side to Sosa, the left wing back, he got forward because Bailey's not going to track him because there'll be occasions where Cash is going to have to deal with two players which is going to be Ta v. Taylor and Sosa and then on that occasion Sosa just you know, flighted the ball in towards the back post and Hilton who came in, he really should have attacked it he allowed the, the fullback Moreno to win the ball comes he just looked his header in the air which made it easier for Martinez to come out and collect it but that was better from Ajax the Ajax fans fanatically chanting on the far side of the field, but it's Aston Villa kicking towards the halt end in the first half. We're coming forward now. Good ball by Rogers. Inside right channel to find Diaby. Cuts it back now to Leon Bailey. Left footed. Curls it wide of goal. Six or seven yards wide in the end from Bailey. We know he loves to work the ball onto his left foot in that sort of position. Tried to bend it towards the far corner. Wouldn't stay on target. Nil nil on aggregate. Rogers done brilliantly there, didn't he? Because he came across from this left side once again, right over to the right. And he played a little square ball, a little ball down the line, should I say, to pick out Bailey, who, sorry, Diaby, who reversed it back into the path of Bailey. He got out his feet well enough, and he's tried curl it in the far corner. You could see what he was trying to do, just couldn't get enough curl and bend on the shot, and it never tro troubled Rami in the goal. And so Rangers out of Europe, West Ham through on aggregate after a 5 0 second leg win over Freiburg, live on Talk Sport 2. Brighton nil, Roma nil in the second leg at the Amex in the Europa League. Though Brighton trail 4 nil on aggregate and Liverpool scored four in the first 14 minutes in the second leg against Sparta Prague. Jurgen Klopp's team 9-1 ahead on aggregate there. Yeah, well, Jurgen will be happy with the, you know, the <laughs> fact... No, he'll be happy with the fact that he's gave some of these the injured players that he's had recently some minutes on the pitch yeah. and he won't, he won't let them play the full 90 they'll probably play 60 minutes and then he'll make changes with the game against Manchester United 
at the weekend on his mind. And I have an exclusive that on Talk Sport. Here is Cash, lovely ball in field from the right wing position for Aston Villa. Floated high towards Bailey. Bailey can't quite get it under control. It's a slice clearance over the top of his own head from Mansberg, the giant midfield player, out of play for an Aston Villa throw. Unai Emery, very uh, energetic and expressive on the near side touchline at the moment as Aston Villa continue to try to come forward but they're thwarted this time as Bailey is blocked off by Sosa. Henderson rolls the ball back to goalkeeper Ramai. Ramai for Ajax inside his own penalty area to the right wing back position and wrench. Wrench forward 10 yards to Clinson. Back it goes now to Sutalo on the edge of his own penalty area. Little touch out to the right-hand side for Ajax and Linson again. Neat triangular passing from Ajax and it's worked well. Henderson though with a terrible ball down the middle. Nowhere near the number nine, Brobby. Well, that was what he was trying to do. I mean, he was looking at Brobby's position and Brobby came short to get involved in the build-up play. You know, your number nine should be stretching the, the two centre-halves, looking to get on the half turn and get the ball played in behind. Rogers trying to thread it through towards Diaby, out comes the goalkeeper, and Diaby has beaten him to it! Deflected effort over the top, and it's gone behind for a corner kick, the block was from Hato, goalkeeper Ramai sliding out at the feet of Diaby to try and pounce on the ball, he let it squirm through his grasp, and then Diaby, from a very tight angle, denied by the block of the 18-year-old Hato, I mean, Aston Villa corner. I think it's actually the keeper who we've got up and rectified his mistakes, because he should have collected that originally, but watch this for a tackle, as Diaby tried to play the ball across the goal with his left foot, You're right. keeper just stretched his leg out and got a touch on it, which took it over the top of the crossbar out for a corner well it's good goalkeeping from the nervy Ramai in the end corner to Aston Villa at the whole 10 first corner of the game nil nil on the night nil nil on aggregate live on Talk Sport in the 25th minute Douglas Louise floats it out swing in header brilliant absolutely brilliant into the net from Ollie Watkins it just had to be him and the first goal of the tie is an Aston Villa goal at the whole 10 a flying Watkins header and the deadlock is broken. Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0. Oh, what a header, Joe. Absolutely wonderful. All the pace was on the delivery, was it, from the corner kick, and he just guided it beyond the goalkeeper into the far corner. Nothing that Ramai could do to keep that out. Classic header from Ollie Watkins. Delivery was excellent. The header was even better. The mark, he wasn't particularly good, but take nothing away from that glancing header from Watkins but eight yards out on the angle beautiful header to give Aston Villa the lead Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0, Ollie Watkins the scorer live on Talk Sport meanwhile news of a disallowed goal at the Amex Alex Crook and a huge let off for Brighton, Brighton nil, Roma nil. Roma thought they'd taken the lead with a quite spectacular overhead kick from Zada Asmoon inexplicably the referee ruled it out for a high foot that got uh, the temperatures raising on the Roma bench I think it's a really harsh decision Brighton nil, Roma nil. and so Roma still lead by four goals to nil on aggregate Holt Enders in the sky rings around Villa Park on what could be a famous European night here Aston Villa who had such a long time of course without European football before this season but it's Aston Villa playing in Europe for the first time since 2010-2011 who lead Ajax by a goal to nil and a goal to nil up on aggregate as well and it's what the game needed as well Joe was that you know it was a little bit flat both teams were feeling each other out you know no one was really doing anything to command uh, the midfield area or great opportunities but the delivery was brilliant from the, the corner kick the movement was very good from Watkins and how pleased the home support are that he didn't have to go off injured after that challenge on Ramai the goalkeeper got up came back into the play and that's what he's been doing all season finding the back of net deft header beautiful header into the far corner to give Villa the lead a 20 second goal of the season in all competitions for Watkins and six in his last six matches in all competitions in total so 1-0 to Aston Villa against Ajax and as it stands they'll be heading through to the quarter-finals and of course a lot of respect for the Europa Conference League these days I really think that West Ham's win in this tournament last season Ray has, has really changed how it's been perceived yeah I, I think also it takes a while for a competition to, to grow its roots doesn't it for everyone to, to, to watch it to view it and to enjoy it 
and certainly West Ham doing what they did last season was absolutely brilliant for the English game and Aston Villa with their opportunity now they're levelling every minute as are the fans they want to see them successful in Europe whatever European competition it is the higher obviously the better and that's what they'll be vying for this season with their league position is to get into that uh, Champions League for next season Ray Halton is with us tonight Ajax on the attack with Borna Sosa near side their left tries a ball infield blocked off by Cash and Aston Villa look a level above Ajax at the moment Ajax who are well off the pace in the Eredivisie they've had a torrid campaign at times and some embarrassing results as the season has gone on and they haven't created anything well, really in the game they're going so to have far. to change their tactics now you know at nil nil you can afford to sit back and you know maybe hit Tassin Villa on the counter attack that's all changed now game plans change they're a goal behind they have to force the issue they have to get a goal to get themselves back into the tie that's a fantastic footballing week and in Europe Aston Villa lead Ajax by a goal to nil here. Bailey looking to dart down the near side the right plays the ball infield to McGinn he's about 25 yards out McGinn urged to shoot McGinn instead plays the ball square to the uh, tall Pau Torres, the Spaniard just inside the Ajax half. And lovely ball by Diego Carlos to Diaby, almost putting it through towards Ollie Watkins. Good interception on the slide by Hato. The loose ball has dropped to McGinn, midway inside the Ajax half. And now Torres to the far side, the left, and Alex Moreno. Moreno back to Pau Torres who's standing astride the halfway line as we tick towards the half-hour mark in the second leg. It's now. amazing, Johnny, when you score a goal, just how your confidence grows. You know, all of a sudden now, the movement's better from the Aston Villa players. The, the passing's crisper. You know, they're, they're moving the ball a lot quicker. You can see the manager now, he's not as animated in his technical area. He's quieting down as well because he's got that goal late and they look threatening to get the second goal now. They certainly do. Bailey's been fouled, tripped late by Sosa. Is that going to be another yellow card out of the pocket of the referee? Well, he certainly signalled for a free kick and actually there are two Aston Villa players down and not only has Bailey gone down, well, Watkins, Watkins has gone down again. Yes, his knee, there was a knee that he injured earlier. Obviously, he's had a little run round on it and uh, he's feeling the effects of that challenge a little bit earlier. He's give Aston Villa the lead, but I'm not sure he's going to be allowed to... He's going to be allowed to go on here. I think he's intimating to the medical staff that he might have to come off for a moment. He's, he's wandering back in there, but he's limping. And here's the challenge. Uh, yeah, uh, it was actually Mansberg. It was just, Mansberg. Just a little kick out, wasn't it? Needless free kick to give away. But with Douglas Louise and the angle that he's at, I wouldn't be surprised if he, if he even shoots here. The goalkeeper's taking up a position, you know, to the, the right-hand side of the... The centre of the goal, Diaby's doing what he does going on to the goal line. Douglas Luiz floats it in, right-footed, punched away by the diving Ramai, collided with his own player inside the penalty area there. Is the referee going to stop the game again? I don't think he has, he has now. I think Sitarlo, isn't it, the big centre-back? Ramai flying out of goal. Yeah, do you know what, he should, have, he should have... That's lack of communication, that comes back from inexperience. I mean, we talked about his age and his and the amount of games that he's played, but he certainly collided with his own player there when there was no reason to do that. He should have come out, shouted early, came and claimed it, instead he punched it in the manner that he did. Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0. On the night and on aggregate here, and our Aston Villa going to be forced into a change, and of course they have to think about what's to come in the Premier League too, because of course they are right in the fight with Tottenham Hotspur in the race for fourth place, and it's Bailey and Watkins walking towards the near side touchline, arms around each other, and John Duran is going to take to the field for Aston Villa here, and having scored the only goal of the tie so far for Villa, worrying this for Unai Emery, and worrying too, potentially for Gareth Southgate in England ahead of the international break. Well, your heart Watkins goes out goes to the off. kid, you know, to him, because you talked about the goals that he scored this season, uh, what an influence he's been on this Aston Villa side, and when he scored the goal, he ran away, and there seemed to be no problem, but after that, Obviously, the impact of the challenge that he had, you can feel the effects on his knee, and he's just walking down the sidelines at the moment, going in to get some treatment, I would imagine, and he'll be hopeful that, you know, the, the injury that he's got is not going to keep him out for too long. And so off goes Watkins down the tunnel, which is uh, just to the left of us here, near the corner flag. So Watkins off injured, and John Duran still waiting to come on. So Aston Villa temporarily down to 10 again. 32 minutes gone, they lead Ajax by a goal to nil on aggregate. Henderson's high floated ball right to left for Ajax is headed away by Cash it just dropped onto his forehead in the right back position Cash now with a nice ball up to the halfway line and Bailey in a congested area Bailey rattles it down the right hand side chasing his Diaby sliding in his Kaplan out of play 
for an Aston Villa throw and here comes Duran now yeah I'll tell you what that was a big challenge from Kaplan there because he went to ground didn't he he had to win it you know if Diaby could have just flicked the ball past him it would have been through 1v1 against the goalkeeper so when the defender comes out in the manner that he did and you go to ground you've got to win it and he certainly did John Duran who has not scored uh, since September the 21st in the group stages the big Colombian but he did have a, a big chunk of this season so far out with a hamstring injury and he immediately tries or thinks he's won a corner in front of the whole 10 but indeed it's out of play for a goal kick to Ajax still Liverpool 4 Sparta Prague nil in the second leg in the Europa League at Anfield Liverpool 9-1 up on aggregate and Brighton 4-0 down to Roma on aggregate 0-0 on the night on the south coast West Ham through in the Europa League earlier Rangers out after they were beaten by a Benfica goal to nil in the second leg 3-2 on aggregate here is Henderson for Ajax, back facing his own goal, back to the goalkeeper, Ramai, all in bright yellow, high hanging ball, drops well over the halfway line, and Moreno in a foot race with Linson of Ajax, Moreno scoops the ball upfield, towards the halfway line, nodded down by Henderson, flicked further forward by Mansberg, Brian Brobby, the number nine, is chasing, Brobby, who at points this season has been linked with Manchester United, and Brobby has one Ajax a throw in the right wing position, far side of the field. We're not really seeing anything of Brobby though, is no? he? not really influenced the game at all, He's not had the opportunity. No, I mean, Taylor's think. not been involved either. Yeah, it's just that they're going to have to up their tempo and the, the way that they're passing it. You'd have to get in his feet. That's where he becomes a, a, a real player. Because he's, he's a physical player. He likes to get in the faces of the opposition. He'll hold up. He'll bring others into the game. But you've got to give him you know, some possession of the ball. And that hasn't been the case so far. Here's McGinn. Midway inside Aston Villa territory with that... A trademark tigerishness on the ball and a good turn by Diaby showing his pace and sprinting into Ajax territory lovely ball outside of the boot into the inside right channel towards Bailey sliding in his Kaplan out of play for a corner what a ball that was from Diaby and Unai Emery is delighted with that pass I'll tell you what there with Bailey what he's got is beautiful balance you know and just a turn of turn of pace and the way he just arched his body there to head it with the outside of his left foot down the channel to try and pick out Bailey and made a good run from this right hand side but uh, Kaplan done well to come across from that centre-back position to win the, the initial challenge. And now Kaplan having to be helped to his feet. It has been a stop-start first 35 minutes at times. And what can Aston Villa do here with another right-wing corner? Near side in front of the whole ten. Yeah, but this one, I mean, the goal that he scored, it was an outswing, and this looks like it's going to be an in-swing in of Bailey is the, the player over on this right-hand side is about to whip the ball in with his, with his left foot. Pau Torres and Diego Carlos are both forward here. It'll be Bailey in front of the halt end, one arm up into the air. Here comes the in-swinging left-footed delivery, punched away, not convincing from the goalkeeper. Headed back, cross-field towards the right by Cash, it won't reach Bailey. Smacked upfield by Sosa, deep into the Aston Villa half, takes a big bounce. Alex Moreno had to time the back header well, and he did very well in front of the on-rushing Mansberg yeah, to really, send it back to Martinez. Really, now Kaplan's gone down again, so this could be a real problem for, for Ajax, and... Martinez done well there because he'd seen that the uh, the Ajax player was down and decided just to throw it out to allow the uh, the medical team to come on and have a look at him. Moreno done brilliantly there, didn't he, Joe? When the ball was played downfield, he was under a bit of pressure. Uh, Mansberg was closest to him and he just cushioned the header back to his goalkeeper. Really, really good defending from him. So now Kaplan will have to receive some treatment, you'd think, here. The Ajax physio is a little slow to get on the field of play. Atalanta nil sporting one in the Europa League second leg, Sporting Lisbon up 2-1 on aggregate, and Maccabi Tel Aviv nil, Olympiacos 2 in the second leg in Israel, but it's Maccabi Tel Aviv who still lead 4-3 on aggregate there, and you're up to date. Yeah, just looking at you know, the first 36 minutes of the game, there's no doubt that uh, the two players that stood out for me are, are Diaby and Bailey. I think they've worked really well as a pair over this right-hand side. Bailey comes a little, little bit deeper. Uh, when it when he was on certainly Watkins was the one that was leading the line there but Bailey's coming a little bit deeper and he's you know he's a real threat getting between the midfield and the back line of this Ajax side they're just looking for the stretcher to come on so obviously Kaplan's in a, a, a bit of pain out there Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil meanwhile goal at the annex talk sports Alex Crook and is this the start of a miracle comeback Brighton 1 Roma nil. it's an absolute stunner from Danny Welbeck right footed into the top corner from 20 yards out the deficit is down to 3 Brighton 1 Roma nil. well you never know as Alex was saying 
It's 4-1 uh, to Roma on aggregate now. And Ray, we had a brilliant Premier League game on Talk Sport yesterday where <laughs> yeah. Bournemouth came, albeit from three down, to uh, win 4-3 against Luton. So, well, you never know. Knows? You never know in football, but it's going to be a tough ask because you're talking about. Uh, Normally, we Italian teams are very adept at defending, aren't they? You know, yes. they, don't, they don't concede too many well, goals. Well, they're quite the open to Rossi's team, though, more so than under Mourinho anyway. So we'll see. If anything changes, of course, Alex will be right with us with the very latest. Brighton 1-0 up on Roma in the second leg, but 4-1 down on aggregate. They've taken a long time to ready this change here, Ajax. So it's a change at centre-half that they're going to make. And at Chuba Akpom, who... We've seen a plenty in the EFL. Talk Sport 2, your home of the EFL. He scored at 29 championship goals for Middlesbrough last season. So he's going to come on in a minute for Kaplan, and that'll mean a change of shape, Ray Howard. Yeah, he'll go to your flat back four. I think it's what they need. I certainly think Brovy up front needs a bit of support. Um, when you're looking at uh, the two central midfield, midfielders, Henderson and Mansberg, neither one of them really, you know get that high up the pitch that often to help him out so he, he very much is isolated with Akpom coming on he'll give him more options Ajax temporarily down to 10 Cash Hurls down the right swings it across for Aston Villa headed away by Mansberg at the near post the loose ball has dropped to Cash angle tight in the area cuts it back towards the near post Gerard had made an enticing run it'll be smuggled away by Ajax and Hato up towards the halfway line again the tireless but frustrated Brobby can't keep it in play and Aston Villa who lead one in on aggregate that's, have a throw that's where you need that little bit more quality in that final third set yeah. with Matty Cash because he's going to a great position it was a nothing ball you know he didn't hit it with any pace he didn't chip it into an area he sort of just rolled it into a, so, hoping that something was going to happen rather than being really yeah, productive in that area of the field where he could have whipped it in and it would have given Aston Villa a lot uh, better opportunity to get the second goal Chuba Akpom is onto the field now for Ajax in place of the injured Kaplan so Ajax back to their full complement of 11 players sports bar later 03717 to have your say on tonight's a European action looks like being a good night another very good night for Liverpool who are easing through on aggregate Aston Villa lead Ajax by a goal to nil here though uh, Duran has now been caught by a late challenge from Hayton we have yet a, another stoppage here didn't look a lot in that, didn't it? To be honest, the challenge. You know, minimal Hato, contact. Yeah, it looked like minimal contact, and it's not what the Aston Villa fans want to see from the big striker going to ground as easily as that. They want them to get into that central position and be uh, a physical presence up there. Salford City 2, Stockport County nil, a latest score in League 2. Salford looking to ease any lingering relegation worries, and they're doing just that. Curtis Tilt has got the second against high flying. Stockport County a flurry of early goals for Liverpool at Anfield what's the latest there talk sports Mark Wilson yeah so Liverpool four spots Prague nil goes for Nunez Clark Salah and Gakpo in a seven minute spell that really did put this one away but there should have been more goals Nunez unmarked six yards out Gakpo just fired across just above him uh, there's a chance here for Sparta Prague who might just have got a goal back they have Sparta Prague have got the ball in the back of the net and it looks like it's uh, Bermancevic who's got it a little bit of hesitation at the back but Manchevich nicked in and he's rolled it past the uh, keeper and into the bottom corner so a little bit of consolation for the visitors here it's Liverpool 4 Sparta Prague 1 so that would be 9-2 for Liverpool on is, that, is that game on? No, is well that? you never know <laughs> in a week of amazing comebacks can Sparta Prague do it? probably not Liverpool warming up for the FA Cup quarter final against Manchester United on Talk Sport, live and exclusive on Sunday. We're the only national radio station with all four FA Cup quarter finals. So make sure you stick with us. Your home of the FA Cup is Talk Sport. We're in the 42nd minute here at Villa Park. Aston Villa lead Ajax by a goal to nil on the night and on aggregate. Ollie Watkins has scored it, but he's since gone off injured, having been named in the England squad earlier today. So that's a concern for Gareth Southgate no doubt it's a, a game Ray Houghton now that is really lacking in rhythm I think because of all these stoppages yeah I mean Duran's gone down in the centre circle at the <sighs> moment as well he's just holding his right knee um, I'm, I think it's from that challenge with Hato earlier on you know potentially well, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, he, he looks in a bit of discomfort at the moment and I'm look, looking at Unai Emery he's just wondering what he's done wrong here because you know he's, he's just seen Watkins come off he's put on a, his replacement in Duran and he's down injured at the minute the sub may have to be subbed and so a more potential injury concerns here for Aston Villa who've seen their lead or their, their grip on fourth place the lead they have over Tottenham cut to just two points and Spurs have 
Uh, a game in hand as well. And Duran is going to try and soldier on it, looks like, for now. What's the latest, meanwhile, in the second leg in the Europa League at the Amex Stadium? Alex Crook. Well, it's still Brighton 1, Roma 0. Danny Welbeck with a stunning effort from the edge of the penalty area. But it's all kicking off here. There was a big melee inside the Roma 18-yard box. Both managers have been shown a yellow card. I'd be surprised if we finish this game with 22 players out there. Brighton 1, Roma 0. And Roma still lead by four goals to one on aggregate in that time. I'm struggling watching Ajax at the moment, what the game plan is. You know, they're not getting it in behind the back line. They, you know, look like you can just see we hit on the ball out and now he goes back to his centre half partner. You know, and that's all they're doing. They're not looking forward quickly enough to get the ball in behind and they've got two strikers on there now and, and try to use, utilise their strength and pace. And they've given it away to Rodgers on the halfway line for Aston Villa. Now Duran dropping deep into the centre circle can barely move as he tried to turn back in towards his own home. Well, the, the Aston Villa fans weren't too happy because he had an option of Bailey over the right-hand side and he turned away from it. He's seen them and that was the right ball to play and he went very negative and that's hence the reason why you hear the Aston Villa fans not too happy with Duran there and he's, uh, he's, he's passing them where he was passing the ball to. Lille 1, Sturm Graz nil in the Europa Conference League. Lille are 4-0 up on aggregate there. Martinez for Aston Villa, the goalkeeper. Square ball to Pau Torres. They've just got to be careful here, Aston Villa. They're so comfortable at 1-0 up, but of course, 1-0 on aggregate is a slender advantage. That said, mistake by the defender Sitalo, and his slice clearances come straight back to Diaby, who chips it to the right-hand side, chested down impressively by Bailey. Corner of the area, couple of step-overs, teasing the defender, plays it back to Rodgers, he tees up John McGinn. McGinn, lovely step-over, tries to place it into the corner from the edge of the D, and his shot is blocked, and Ajax will clear. Yeah, I think he should have went for power there, John McGinn. You know, you could see he just as he went, he just curled it, he stood back first. He should have stepped onto it. Rogers edge of the box, rifles one over the top, looking for his first Aston Villa goal. He should have done better there. He got himself into a really good position. He's only 20 yards out, but he's went for power and dip and never got it on target. Just got underneath the ball, which took it over the top with the crossbar. But better from Aston Villa. They look it looks more promising that they're going to get the second goal in this tie. Now then, Ray, how much added time are we going to have in this first half? Uh, I'm going for six. <laughs> I, think think? I think you're not far off. I was going to say five or six. There have been so many injury stoppages. All eyes on the fourth official. Albeit Ajax coming forward now. Taylor's ball to the right-hand side and Henderson. Jordan Henderson for Ajax, 20 yards from the edge of the penalty area. Deep ball into the far post, headed away by Cash before it could reach Sosa. Now it's dropped down to Mansvote. There'll be five added minutes in the first half here. Aston Villa lead Ajax by Galton in the second leg of their last 16 tie in the Europa Conference League. It, the way the game feels at the moment, it almost feels like it's game over. Yeah, I mean, Such is Ajax's lack of urgency Yeah, there's the no, not a lot of urgency from them. And the, and the players you were looking at, like Taylor, Brobby, who might give them a, a, an extra dimension, they've not seen it. That's a good crossfield ball, though, by Wrench to find Sosa. Sosa's touch is heavy, dead ball line, he pulls it back, and his first touch led him down there. It meant the pullback was difficult. Bailey tracking back makes the interception for Aston Villa, who lead one. I think he went the wrong way. It was a great run from Sosa from the left wing-back position. He got in behind Matty Cash. But when he got to the byline, he should have just lifted it high to the back post. There was Broby, and that was the ball he was looking for. Nearly a minute through the five added in the first half. The ball is with Ajax on the halfway line, and Linson will scamper forward into Aston Villa territory, but with no great direction or intent, he eventually got a square ball back from Jordan Henderson. See, uh, Akpom made a good run down the right channel, and that was the ball he should have played, and he, he went away from that and played a negative pass. Ajax have given it away, Bailey prods it through the middle towards the RB. goalkeeper came a long way and he did well, Ramai, sliding Bomb, to clear it away. Yeah, he's your sweeper keeper, isn't it, Joe? He's read the situation so quickly. He's, he's fortunate because he just got there ahead of the attacker. I mean, it was millimetres in it, but he read it well, the keeper, you've got to give him credit. Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil. Half-time at Anfield in the Europa League. Mark Wilson. Yeah, Liverpool 4, Sparta Prague 1. Four goals in seven minutes early on. Nunez, Clark, Salah and Gakpo put Liverpool in control. But Mancevic snatched one back late on for Sparta Prague. Liverpool 4, Sparta Prague 1. And Liverpool lead by nine goals to two on aggregate. Lille 1, Sturm Graz 1 in the Europa Conference League. Lille 4-1 up on aggregate against the Austrian side. And Aston Villa 1-0 up on aggregate here against Ajax. Nearly two minutes through the five added at the end of the first half. One or two empty seats cropping up in the stands. Those sky blue and claret seats as Aston Villa fans head to the concourse areas ahead of half-time. 
And what before the game was a very rainy night, not so now then. Yeah, it's been a little better spell in the last minute or so for Ajax with a, bit of a lot more touches of the ball, but still not played any ball in behind to try and get in behind this back line. That's a good ball by Linson onto Brobby. Brobby in the right back position here for Ajax, but he's got the cross all wrong. Miles over hit. The ball is going to swing out of play for a throw. I was about to say. Linson is lightweight as a feather in the first half. That's the first incisive pass that he's actually played. And Brobby, Ray Houghton, wrong he option. should be in the middle for that. Yeah, but he was the wrong option because he had two players that you could have picked out with a final delivery. I think he should have went with about uh, about pace on the ball, hit it low and hard as he as he did there. He just tried to chip it to the back post and got too much on and uh, went harmlessly out for a throw into Aston Villa. Club Bruges won Molder nil in the Europa Conference League. That's high level at two all on aggregate half time Bayer Leverkusen nil Karabag nil that's two apiece on aggregate Atlanta nil Sporting 1 at half time Sporting lead 2-1 on aggregate that in the uh, those two ties in the Europa League now Brobby's gone down into yeah Carlos uh, there was a coming together between the two players and uh, Carlos backed off straight away I don't think there was any intent from uh, Carlos at all there he certainly looked like he he, he caught uh, Brobby, Brobby went to ground right in front of the referee I think the referee had a good view of it he just waited a moment or two and then blew the whistle and he's going to give the possession back to Ajax at the moment 3-0 to Olympiacos at Maccabi Tel Aviv in the Europa Conference League so that's now 4 all on aggregate remarkable first half comeback from the Greek side very low key atmosphere here now at Villa Park into the last minute and 10 seconds of first half added time Aston Villa 1 Ajax nil headed away by Diego Carlos out of play for an Ajax throw Jordan Henson's in a bit more influence in the game though isn't he he's in a lot more uh, touches of the ball and he's the ones that's he, from that central position hit the diagonals try to pick out Sosa over on this left hand side Taylor's the one I mean I think he's got a lot more ability and there's a lot more about him he's not offered a great deal at all so far Chuba Akpom looking to get him behind down by the dead ball line he's kept it in play back to Brobby off the line by Cash and cleared upfield by Douglas Luiz First time that Ajax have really created anything against Aston Villa tonight, and it was the former Middlesbrough man, Chuba Akpom with the fullback. Probably first time shot. Cash gets back to clear it off the line. Oh, brilliant defender from Cash, who got back to help out his team and his goalkeeper in particular on the line. But Akpom there, how quick was he as he played the ball in behind? I think it was Moreno. And then he played into an area which favoured Brobby, who got his shot on target, but Matty Cash read it so quickly and cleared the danger for Villa. They might be on the attack again here with Linson, but Alex Moreno is there to sweep up in the left-back position for Aston Villa. A dance was right to mention it before the game. We saw Chuba Akpom last season for Middlesbrough, 28 goals in the Championship, and he nearly set up an equaliser for Brian Brobby there, but Matty Cash was back to clear it off the line as the half-time whistle blows. Ollie Watkins with the only goal of the tie so far here in the second leg. A brilliant flying header from a corner on the near side, the right. Watkins, though, has since had to go off injured, which will be a concern not just for Unai Emery, but for Gareth Southgate and England as well. Ajax had rarely looked like threatening. In fact, the atmosphere was such that it felt like there was almost no jeopardy in the tie, even though Villa are only 1-0 up. But that chance right at the end of the first 45 reminds us all that Ajax might still have a potential foothold. At half-time, Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0, 1-0 on the night and 1-0 up on aggregate. Joe Shannon and Ray Houghton, your commentary team here on Talk Sport, where the live sport just keeps on coming. Gold Cup day at Cheltenham tomorrow. Alan Brazil back on the Superstar Breakfast on TalkSport from 6am with Ali McCoist and Ray Parler. Well, I assume he will be. He managed the whole week last year. Actually, I'm more concerned about Paul Hawksby's voice than Alan Brazil's. Paul sounded like he was struggling this afternoon on H&J, but that's not because of any extra libations. But Paul and Andy will be back tomorrow from one as well with four races, including, of course, the Cheltenham Gold Cup. All seven races on the card tomorrow from the final day of the Cheltenham Festival are across the TalkSport network on either TalkSport or TalkSport 2. And the FA Cup, the Premier League and the Championship are all in focus this weekend across the network. We start Saturday lunchtime at 12.15 with Wolves Coventry here on TalkSport in the FA Cup quarter-final. Swansea Cardiff kicks off at half 12 in the Championship as a TalkSport 2 exclusive. Straight after that on TalkSport 2, we're off to Turf Moor for Burnley-Brentford in one of the two 3 o'clock Premier League kickoffs. Manchester City's FA Cup quarter-final against Newcastle follows at 5.30 on TalkSport. And on Sunday afternoon, 
Chelsea Leicester on TalkSport in the FA Cup quarter final at 12.45 and Manchester United Liverpool 3.30 you can only hear that on TalkSport nationally indeed we are the only radio station bringing you all four FA Cup quarter finals across the weekend here on TalkSport and TalkSport 2 in the Premier League darts tonight Luke Littler has very nearly hit a nine darter in seeing off Michael Van Gerwen in the quarterfinals to win by six legs to two. But let's go around the grounds elsewhere in Europe. Let's get to half time in the Amex Stadium. Brighton and Hove Albion had a four goal deficit to make up, and it sounds like it's been a spicy first 45, Alex Crook. You can say that again, Dan. It's just the eight yellow cards, including both managers. But Brighton have completed the first step of what would be a miracle comeback. They lead by goal to nil at half time. Danny Welbert with a brilliant right foot curler from 20 yards out straight into the top corner. That's the goal that separates the two teams. Brighton did have a let off before that on 23 minutes. Roma looked to have taken the lead. Zadar Azmoun, who's been at the uh, height of much of the confrontation, he found the back of the net with a simple brilliant uh, overhead kick the referee disallowed the goal though uh, for a high foot when television replays actually showed uh, that Jan Paul Van Hecker the Brighton defender was probably stooping to head the ball clear as opposed to the foot being in an unnatural position uh, that was really the start of the controversy and the spat that developed on the touchline between Messrs Roberto De Zerbi and Daniele De Rossi I'd be surprised Dance if we don't see at least one red card in the second half the referee for me has completely lost control of the game but it is Brighton 1 Roma 0 it's 4-1 to Roma on aggregate Thanks, Crookie. And as you heard earlier, Liverpool really going through the gears against Sparta Prague. 4-1 up at half-time. Here, Ray Houghton at Villa Park. Villa started really well, totally dominated Ajax, got deservedly in front, and then things have gone incredibly low-key since then. Yeah, also you remember Ajax was forced into making a change and changing the system. So they brought on an extra attack, and I think Jordan Hendon started to have an influence in the game. He had a lot more touches of the ball. He's been more positive with his passes. They were steady just going backwards and square. He was like, they were actually playing it forward, which is going to favour Bobby. He wants the ball went behind. He wants to be physical. He wants to run the channels, as does Akpom. And that's where the chance came from. You know, a little ball played down the channel. Akpom shows his strength on the touchline, going be- beyond uh, the, the full-back, and then pulling the back into the path of Bobby. Got his shot on target. Great defending from Matt Cash. That's what you want from your fullback yeah. is to be proactive, see the danger, help your keeper out, got back on the line and cleared it off the line. You talked to me about smelling danger. Yeah, so you got you got I mean that's part and parcel of the game and it's nice to see, you know, defenders actually defending. You know, they're doing the right things, getting into good positions, reading the game. That's very much a part of it. Talk to me about the Ajax defending there. They were like crash test dummies for no. that goal. Nobody tracked that run. No, not only that, Ian, it was, it was evident before that. The goalkeeper looked edgy. Rama, you know, there was a few times he got caught in possession ball. The one that, where he played it out wide to the right and he played it virtually straight to Ollie Watkins, whose touch let him down. That was like even four or five yards in front of him instead of 15. He would have went through 1v1 with a keep when he had. I think it was Bailey coming in from the other side that he could have just laid the ball into. So yeah, there was a nervous edginess about the way that Ajax was played but since they've changed their formation they've looked a bit better they look more threatened and I think you're going to see more of that in the second half um, Emery's not happy he's not happy with the way that uh, they've gone off it you know since they went 1-0 up there was a couple of half chances but they've allowed they've allowed Ajax back into it because they're not closing down high enough and also with Duran coming on and he's gone down with an injury I, th- I don't think you know the players are looking around is he okay or not uh, and then the two players I think who can stand out uh, is Diaby and Bailey they're the ones they're the match winners and you've got to get them the ball if you starve them in the ball there's, there's no point you know Rogers and the other side making some good runs but him and uh, Moreno are not going to dovetail like the other two on the right hand side are so that's what I'm sure uh, Unai Emery will be saying to these players Ollie, get the ball out to them too as often as you can Ollie Watkins 22 goals in 40 appearances all competitions is a terrific return but he has gone off injured he went in on the goalkeeper and picked up a yellow card kind of jarred his knee into the into the, the, the foot of the goalkeeper and it looked initially though that he was going to run it off and he was going to be okay but uh, well, but for both Unai Emery and Gareth Southgate, that's a concern. A couple of things. One, initially I thought he was going to go off because when you've seen him, he's down there for quite a while. He wasn't down he there was. for like 30 seconds. He's down there for at least two, three minutes. 
and the, uh, the medical team were assessing him. Then when he got up, he, was, he wasn't moving freely, was he? You could see he wasn't quite happy with it. And then he had a little run, and he thought, oh, it's not too bad. Gets the goal, and I watched his, I watched him running when he scored the goal, and it didn't look a problem. But after that, it's the impact, and then it takes effect afterwards. And then you start running, and you think, oh, it's not quite right. I can feel a penny, I can feel a twinge. And he did the right thing because if it had carried on he might have done more damage to it as it is he can go out he can get it assessed they can have a good look at him and hopefully it's not going to be uh, an injury that's going to keep him out for any length of time well it's his goal Ollie Watkins that separates the sides at half time so as it stands Villa are going through I will say quickly Morgan Rogers is going to have to be careful he was booked in the first half and he also put in a very strong challenge not long after the goal went in that could easily have earned him a second yellow from this referee Oral Grinfield who looks willing to brandish a yellow car for something that looks slightly suspicious so Morgan Rogers just needs to be erring on the side of caution Erst, well lest he gets a second caution in the second half and puts Villa under pressure but Villa are in front at half time so let's get the half time odds with Ladbrokes Odds update on TalkSport with Ladbrokes we play together terms and conditions apply 18 plus begambler.org so as things stand with Villa 1-0 up they are 7-1 to one on to win the tie with Labrooks, the draw at 90 minutes is at six to one. If you fancy Ajax to turn things around completely, you'll get 18 to one odds there. Those are your latest odds then with Labrooks, 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. Odds update on Talksport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus. BeGambleAware.org. So the Gold Cup is the big race on the final day of the Cheltenham Festival. All seven races will be live on the TalkSport network with commentary from Rupert Bell and Lizzie Kelly, the dream team on H&J from 1 o'clock tomorrow. Make sure you're listening to that. They've been fantastic all week, H&J, from the festival, as have the Breakfast Boys, and they're back tomorrow from 6 a.m. One last hurrah for Alan Brazil, Ali McCoist and Ray Parler at Presbury Park. But meantime, you're listening to kick-off on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Full second half commentary coming up. Villa, 1-0 up against Ajax. Kick-off on TalkSport with Labrooks. We play together. Terms and conditions apply. 18 plus begambleaware.org. Britain, did you know private health care can be expensive, affordable, with Benenden Health, it's just £12.80 per person per month. What's the catch? There isn't one. It's one price for all, with no hidden charges. Can anyone join? Yep, everyone's welcome. No one's excluded. <coughs> Hello, most everyone. Join the 850,000 people who already enjoy affordable private health care. Whoever you are, Britain, we've got you. Search Benenden Health. Healthcare done different. Limits and exclusions apply. Fee reviewed annually. UK residents only. Get a £5 free bet every day this job. That's right, a £5 free bet on any race every day of the festival with William Hill. We're children ready, are you? Opt in required, valid Feb 26 till March 15th. One £5 free bet per customer per day on any children races. Promo capping limits and TNCs apply. 18 plus be You alright, mate? Oh, no, my boiler's knackered. Do you know any plumbers? Yeah, I do, yeah. You know Danny? Well, he lives next door to this woman who's engaged to this lady who went to school with a bloke called Gary. All right. Is he a plumber? No, he's not, no. But he knows a bloke who walks a dog with this woman. <sighs> Debbie, I think she's called. Well, she gets her hair cut with Sam. Don't worry. You already know somebody who fixes boilers. British Gas. And you don't even have to be one of our customers. Our engineers are local, and their work is guaranteed for 12 months. Such British Gas Boiler Repairs. So, is he a plumber? Well, technically, no. But he's got a van. The biggest rugby tournament of the year is coming to a Green King pub near you. Watch all the unmissable action live as Europe's top six battle it out for glory in the Six Nations tournament. In and out, in and out, for the line! Leave your rivalries at the door and get their team together to watch the Six Nations. Feel the excitement and the buzz of coming together to enjoy matchday food and drink at your nearest Green King sports pub. Scores in the corner! The Six Nations and Green King. 18 plus, drinkaware.co.uk. At BetMGM, we know that Cheltenham is the greatest show on turf. So let's bring in the horses. Make that 20 horses tearing up the hill. Now cue the Cheltenham roar. That's more like it. And BetMGM's offer, if your horse loses the first race, we'll give you money back as a free bet up to 20 pounds every day. Welcome to fabulous Cheltenham. Betty MGM, it's showtime. Max stake, 20 pounds. T's and C's apply. 18 plus. Please gamble responsibly. You know how the best ideas come in the shower? 
Or here's one for you. Switching to an energy-efficient shower head is more efficient because it saves water and could save you up to £40 a year on energy bills. And that's worth singing about. Shower, save, repeat. It all adds up. Find more energy-saving tips at gov.uk forward slash save energy. At Betfred, we want to support all our customers in keeping their gambling fun. I'll just have a bet usually every home game, really, because it's maybe only twice a month. I'm like that with the boxing when there's like a big hype around it and I don't want to get involved, but like it's, it's not that often. To be fair, I often just put a time out on me if it starts getting a bit too much. Taking a break is just one of the ways that you can gamble safely. Do you have like a regular team that you bet on? Or? I won't bet on the team I support. <laughs> You'll just disappoint you twice. <laughs> <laughs> How do you keep it fun? Gamble safely with Betfred. On 1089 and 1053 medium wave, on DAB, online and on your smart speaker. Absolutely sensational. The Europa Conference League, live on Talk Sport. Good ball by Rogers. Inside right channel to find Diaby. Cuts it back now to Leon Bailey. Left footed. Curls it wide of goal. Rogers trying to thread it through towards Diaby. Out comes the goalkeeper. And Diaby has beaten him to it. Deflected effort over the top. Floats it out. Swing in. Header brilliant. Absolutely brilliant into the net. From Ollie Watkins. It just had to be him. And the deadlock is broken. Aston Villa 1. Ajax 0. That's the half-time score live here this Thursday evening in the Europa Conference League on TalkSport. You're listening to Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0 in the Europa Conference League on TalkSport, supported by TNT Sports. You can watch tonight's game and all the Europa League action live only on TNT Sports. And don't forget that the latest episode of the Men's Room podcast with the Bush, Tom Skinner and Mr. Dart. Neil Razor Ruddock out now on the TalkSport YouTube channel or wherever you get your podcasts. The West Ham cult hero Matty Etherington joined the boys this week. He revealed that Kyle Walker and Gary Neville are the only two players he could never, ever get the better of. You can watch the latest episode of the new and improved Men's Room podcast right now over on the TalkSport YouTube channel, or you can listen wherever you get your podcast. Early goal in the second half at Anfield in the Europa League. Talk sports, Mark Wilson. Yeah, it was 5-1 in the first leg. It's now 5-1 in the second leg. Liverpool scoring the first goal of the second half. Dominic Sabosai picked it up, edge of the area, wandered into the box. Nobody closed him down. His shot took a slight deflection off Kreshi and went past Vindal into the back of the net. Liverpool made a triple change at half-time. Simicast, McConnell and Elliot replacing Gomez, Endo and Nunes. Maybe as Jurgen Klopp has one eye on that FA Cup tie on Sunday. Four minutes gone, second half. Liverpool 5, Sparta Prague 1. Thank you, Mark. Earlier today in the Europa League, Rangers knocked out by Benfica, AC Milan, Marseille and West Ham also going through. West Ham beating Freiburg 5-0 on the night live on TalkSport 2, 5-1 on aggregate. Currently in the other Europa League ties, you've heard that Liverpool are 5-1 up. Brighton 1-0 up at half-time, but they need three more against Roma to force extra time. Leverkusen, Karabakh still 0-0 that was 2-2 from the first leg remember Leverkusen still not lost in any competition this season under Xabi Alonso and it's Atalanta 1, Sporting 1 that's 2-2 on aggregate elsewhere in the Europa Conference League early kickoffs: Fenerbahce, Fiorentina Pauk and Victoria Pulzenia on penalties went through Bruges 2-2 with Mulder, they're 1-0 up on the night, that's 2-2. Lille 4-1 up on aggregate against Sturm Graz, and it's 4-4, as Joe mentioned, Maccabi Tel Aviv, Olympiakos. But here at Villa Park, can Villa hang on to their one-goal advantage, or indeed add to it? They've made a change to take you through the second half, alongside former Villa midfielder Ray Houghton, it's Talk Sport match commentator Joe Shannon. Thank you, Dan. one 1-0 up in the tie, Aston Villa, and that half-time change... Yuri Tielemans for Morgan Rogers, and I just wonder whether the fact that Rogers was on a yellow card yeah. maybe played into that. Yeah, and listen, you're, you're worried about a second yellow, aren't you? You yeah. know, when you're a competitor like Rogers is, and he went into a couple of challenges after he got the yellow card, and you were, oh, <laughs> then he was walking a tightrope. So the managers decided to just change up. I wonder if it'll change the dynamic because it, it looks like Diaby, who was really good playing over on the right hand side, quite close to Bailey. Looks like he's got to start over on this left-hand side and Telemans will be playing in a, a more central position. Well, it's a very flexible setup, isn't it, for Aston Villa under Unai Emery. People talk of this, this box-like mid- midfield that he has. I think there's a maybe an issue on the far side as we look at it. The referee's sorted that now. And maybe it was something that was going on with the 
assistant referee, but everything is sorted and the second half is about to get underway. Aston Villa playing from right to left in the second half towards the north stand with its two tiers and executive boxes. Aston Villa in the claret and blue with white shorts and Ajax all in black playing from left to right towards the whole ten. We are back underway. Little chip ball by John McGinn out to the near side, the left, and Diaby right in front of our commentary position, which is deep inside the Ajax half. Lovely touch by Diaby to set up Moreno on the underlap, fizzes in the cross, headed away by Hato. It'll drop down to Cash, lovely cushioned header to the feet of Bailey. Bailey corner of the penalty area, he's surely going to shape to cut infield onto that left foot. He does, he whips the ball cross field, almost right along the 18-yard line to find Diaby. So Tielemans for Rodgers, the only half-time change. Diaby having to trot back towards halfway. Villa with Martinez in goal. Cash, Diego Carlos, Pau Torres and Moreno. As McGinn knocks down the field towards Duran, he's controlled surely with his arm. He's hammered it wide on the stretch anyway. He was off balance and the referee did spot the free kick for handball. Oh, it was a lovely ball over the top, wasn't it? Yeah. It was a good run from Duran, but then his touch let him down at the vital moment. I mean, he's watched it all the way. I went. Th I think he went with his wrong foot. He tried to control it with the outside of his left foot, rather with his right, and then took the strike on with his left foot. As it was, it just came off the turf, bounced up, hit him on the arm. The referee was right on top of it, and even though he's got his strike towards goal, the referee had already blown for the, the free kick. But a positive start from Aston Villa. I really like Diaby. You know, first time I've really seen him in the flesh, watching him. A beautifully balanced play, and he's got wonderful vision and a great... Yeah, wait a pass as we just seen when he just laid the ball through for Moreno who should have done better with the final delivery into the box the club record signing last summer Moussa Diaby very sprightly the lime green boots on tonight so Villa with Douglas Louise and John McGinn in the central positions as we look at it Diaby and Bailey out wide and Tielemans just behind Duran Ajax a goal down here on the night and in the tie as Jordan Henderson feeds the ball up the outside right channel towards Brobby across comes Paul Torres with that great authority a player of great stature physically and in terms of his composure and Brobby with a needless fouler shove in the back and an Aston Villa free kick clever clever was it from Paul Torres because he knew he was under enormous pressure from Brobby and he just waited for a little bit of contact soon as he felt the touch on his back over he went right in front of the assistant who blew for the free kick and now here come Ajax with Taylor looking to burst into the penalty area it could drop to Linson he goes down Ajax appeal for the penalty nothing given by the referee I think he just fell over his own feet there I mean that was a real challenge poor from Aston Villa as Aston Villa clear and Aston Villa still lead the tie by a goal to nil here's Leon Bailey darting up the middle they've got two in support one of them is Diaby left wing position low cross towards Duran cut out by Hato before it could reach him there's another goal at Anfield Mark Wilson it's Liverpool 6 Sparta Prague 1 Harvey Elliott's shot deflected in by Cody Gakpo for his second Tang on second half Liverpool 6 Sparta Prague 1 I'm losing count Ray hello there's occasions where it's, <laughs> the referee should blow up early isn't there? <laughs> and I mean, this is one of them what are they getting out of it to be honest 11-2 to Liverpool on aggregate now Sparta are probably going back after the game they could actually start the engines and get them home a little bit earlier that Villa throw by the way came to nothing Liverpool yeah. at Manchester United in the FA Cup quarter final on Sunday 3.30 live and exclusive on Talk Sport oh, we've got all that, four quarter finals how good is that game going to special. be oh it's going to be special it, it really will these two sides are well teams they're not just English teams are not just European teams these are world teams you know, what happens to these sides is affected all around the world with the fans that support them and the rivalry between the two over the years has been absolutely fantastic and I expect it to be a ferocious game of football the country will be listening and we hope that you will be here is Bailey for Aston Villa, edge of the D, twist back onto his left foot away from Mansberg. Scoop forward by Douglas Louise, that's going to go out of play. Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0, 49 minutes played, 1-0 on aggregate. I have to give you the Ajax team as well. The goalkeeper is Ramai, Sutalo and Hato are the centre-halves, Renshit right back, Sosa at left back, Henderson and Mansberg sitting, Linson, Taylor and Chuba Akpom in support of Brian Brobby up front and there is a little bit of activity on the Ajax bench possibly we'll keep an eye on that as Pau Torres facing his own goal lets the ball trickle through to Martinez at the halt end Club Bruges 2 Molden nil in the Europa Conference League so that tie has been turned on its head Club Bruges lead by three goals to two on aggregate by the way Brighton won Roma nil in the second leg Brighton 4-1 down on aggregate you can still feel the tension in the stadium though can you because even the Aston Villa fans although the, the, the sides 1-0 up they're not really assured that they're going to go through in this tie 
you know they're not defending the quite as well they're not passing the ball quickly enough I watch a new Ma Unai Emery in his technical area and he's not happy he's up and down he's trying to cajole his players he's trying to get them higher up the pitch you know he's not happy with them trying to pass the ball out the back in the manner that's too slow too ponderous it's allowing Ajax to come and close them down Ajax playing towards the giant halt end away to the right lots of banners behind that goal Akpom with the white boots on the speedy Akpom very good in tight areas, he manages to skip away from Pau Torres, then goes to ground and the throw goes Aston Villa's way. Pau Torres has been excellent tonight. So Aston Villa lead by a goal to nil. The return of the EFL this weekend to talk sport two. Swansea against Cardiff, Saturday lunchtime the South Wales derby. There are only nine games left in the championship season. Swansea, not quite safe from relegation. Cardiff, would you believe it, have an outside chance of the playoffs. Every single game matters, and particularly in the EFL. That, that'll be a quiet affair, they want to go yes, to Cardiff. Yes, they're nice, uh, relaxed, relaxed nice, matches. Yeah, those. a very nice relaxing 90 <laughs> minutes of football, that one. Headed by Tielemans towards the halfway line, and Bailey neatly juggles the ball away from Mansberg, and he gets the return pass from John McGinn. Bailey always looks so dangerous when he's on the ball. He scampers into a central position, and now McGinn with that bright green captain's armband on. Wide to Cash on the right, and Cash's goal line clearance, remember, in first half stoppage time to keep the score at 1 0 to Villa in the time. Well, Villa are keeping the ball, but it's too slow. And Matt Cash just passed it square there, and then he's, he's motioning to slow things down. I don't think they need to slow down, I think they need, they need to speed it up. They need to get this crowd behind them. There's a bit of noise in the stadium, but it's, you know they're, they're trying to level best to cajole them and, and, and get. Aston Villa higher up the pitch but they look more threatening when they get the ball into Bailey into Diaby that's when they look a real team that's going to open up this Ajax back line lots of Aston Villa players warming up down in front of us here with the floodlights on at Villa Park a ground of such rich history and character header on the halfway line by Akpom unchallenged little flick towards Broby the number nine Broby looking to burst beyond Diego Carlos who sticks out a leg to poke it out of play Diego Carlos has of course only just come back to the Aston Villa squad after that sped out with a with a hamstring injury. Here is Wrench for Ajax. Back to the halfway line and the 18-year-old Yorl Hato, who signed a new contract with the club earlier this week. The rain of earlier, by the way, is a distant memory. It's a, a perfect evening for football now. The surface is nice and slick. Here is Wrench, that long-sleeved black shirt on. Just shy of the halfway line. Aston Villa keeping the midfield areas congested, but it's with Mansberg. Mansberg, the Norwegian in the centre circle, touches it onto Akpom. Akpom's got Broby making a run ahead of him. Broby couldn't quite take that in his stride. It was almost threaded behind the run of Broby, the intended run. And now Aston Villa on the counter with Bailey stepping one way and then the other against Hato. It's a foot race between the two. Hato's backing off and Broby trying to dart in field. Hato did really well to stand up to the challenge of Bailey there. Well, well the good thing there, Joey, didn't dive in. That, that, that was the bonus. If he went in, went in there, tried to win it too early with the uh, skill and the pace of Bailey, would have just knocked it past him and he would have been behind the back line of, of Ajax. As it was, he was patient. So a lot of experience and maturity for someone so young. But the, there's no doubt, Broby and Akpom are the ones. If they can get the ball to them too, more often than not, there is a way back into this game for Ajax. Among others, Ajax without Steven Bergvine, the former Tottenham player, who is their club captain. Henderson wearing the armband tonight. Jordan Henderson, who is in the England squad, has played it back to Sutala. The first call-ups for England for Jared Branthwaite and Anthony Gordon today. The two England friendlies will be live on Talk Sport. Great ball by Henderson up the middle towards Broby, and he goes down under the challenge of Diego Carlos. The ball is gathered by goalkeeper Martinez. Again, the Ajax head coach, Van Skip, appeals to the officials, no penalty. Uh, well, I, don't, I think it was outside the box, the contact, but it probably got the flick head, and as he went to go past, Carl, there was a coming together between the two players, and yeah, I think the uh, Aston Villa defender was just a little bit too strong there for, for Broby. Aston Villa survive and they lead by a goal to nil. So Salford 2, Stockport 1. Goal back for high-flying Stockport. Bayer Leverkusen nil, Karabag 1 in the second leg in the Europa League. So Karabag lead 3-2 on aggregate. Here come Aston Villa now with Diaby. Corner of the penalty area, whips in the cross. Bailey far post. Before it could reach him, Ramai, the goalkeeper, was there to pluck it out of the air. Yeah, too much height on the delivery there from Diaby. Moreno made a great run from the left back position in which attracted the wrench the full back so it allowed Diaby a little bit more time in possession of the ball and he should have actually whipped it in with a bit of pace as it was he just floated it which made it much easier for Ramai to come and collect it Ajax perhaps growing in confidence here cheered on endlessly and raucously by the thousands of travelling fans who are in the upper and the lower tiers of the Dog Ennis stand well they're certainly not over that's for sure at the moment 
you know, I, I do believe if they get the ball forward to the two strikers, that is a way forward for them to get themselves back into this tie. A one goal lead is a slender one. Maccabi Tel Aviv now 5 4 up on aggregate against Olympiakos and Atlanta 2 Sporting 1, a latest score, the Italian side 3 2 ahead on aggregate. Henderson's crossfield ball for Ajax is headed away by Diego Carlos. It drops down to Taylor. Neat header into the path of Sosa. Sosa, the left wing, back up to the edge of the penalty area. Lays it square to Henderson, who dallies on the ball. Robbed of possession by Diaby. Aston Villa trying to break, but they can't do so. It's been given away by Tielemans. Ajax now in possession and looking for an equaliser on the night and in the tie. Akpom in the right wing position plays it back to Henderson. These are tense and nervous times for the 40 odd thousand supporting Aston Villa tonight live on Talk Sport. Crossfield ball by Wrench. Border Sosa's header down. Headed away by Diego Carlos before it could reach Brian Brobby. And now Bailey looks to break for Aston Villa. Ball up the far side channel. Duran is chasing it. Has he got the pace to beat Sutalo? Sutalo could be in trouble here. Duran is through. Clear on goal. Steers it over the top left footed Beat the defender to it Couldn't beat the goalkeeper Sutalo upset with the referee No I think the referees actually just gave the free kick So the panic's over with But uh, Duran showed plenty of power and pace Over on that right hand side Up against Sutalo Just a simple ball from Bailey Down the channel It's a foot race between the two players And I think when he came in there he just pushed them The referee initially allowed play to continue And as a uh, he took the shot on, you can clearly see the referee had already blown his whistle and gave the free kick to Ajax. Sports Bar follows us tonight on Talk Sport 0371722334 to speak to Jamie O'Hara and Jason Cundy. West Ham through in the Europa League, the Rangers have been knocked out. Uh, Brighton lead Roma by a goal to in the second leg, but still 4-1 down on aggregate. Liverpool absolutely hammering Sparta Prague for the second time in the space of a week. And it's Aston Villa 1, Ajax 0 in the Europa Conference League here at Villa Park but as we tick towards the 57 minute mark and suddenly it's got a bit livelier in the stands yeah here. you can hear the Ajax fans that's for sure who've been mainly quiet throughout that first half I think in the last five minutes of the first half with having a bit more joy you certainly heard them but uh, no it's the Aston Villa fans that really have to get behind their side because they need their oh and this is so nonsensical Duran needs a new shirt and the referee says, now that you've changed your shirt, you've got to wait off the pitch and wait to be told to come back on. That is just that such the, a silly rule. Is it the 32nd rule? Oh, it's just nonsense. Throw from Moreno infield for Aston Villa, who are temporarily down to 10 men. Duran, arms outstretched, gets the call to come back on. Well, what a waste of time that was. Cash to the right wing position and Bailey. Aston Villa looking for the cushion of a second goal and a two-goal advantage in the time. Bailey trots back towards the halfway line and the pace slows to walk it. See, I don't understand what Bailey's just done there. <laughs> he was like five yards outside the 18-yard box in the attacking half of the field and he's gone all the way back to his goalkeeper and he's just trying to say, slow it down, slow it down. That, I just don't understand the tactics for Aston Villa. They need to speed it up. It, it, at the moment, it's, it's Ajax that are looking at the, the more threatening. They're, they're, they're less cautious now. Great ball off the left-hand touchline though by Diaby. The crowd on their feet. Moreno's early cross. Duran! Is it going to go in? It's wide! Durant blocked off by the goalkeeper. The Villa fans want a penalty kick. Unai Emery, arms outstretched, can't believe it either. The referee's given nothing but a goal kick to Ajax. Yeah, what a break this is. Moreno's made so much room up from that left-back position. He's put it into a great area. I don't think, I think there's always got to be contact between the attacker and the, the goalkeeper. I just felt there that if you, if you looked at Durant, he only had to lift it over him. He's actually stabbed it into the ground. You know, that was a bad miss in, in, from our point of view because if he went in there with real bravery and real determination, he had an empty goal. The goalkeeper was second best to it. As it was, he kicked the ball out of the ground and then, of, of course, there's going to be impact between the striker and the goalkeeper. It was a very brief AR check. It came to nothing. Aston Villa have won it back up the field now. Here is Bailey. Bailey into the area. Twisting, turning, shooting! Yeah, well, I should see Aston Villa through to the last eight of the competition. 
brilliant play from Bailey was as soon as he gets the ball inside the 18 yard box you know he's going to do something special just slows the defender down little shimmy with the hips gets it onto onto his right foot and then just strokes it into the back of the net to make it 2-0 he actually came from poor play from Ajax he should have done a little better man not gave the ball away but when Bailey does it and there's the right footed strike just beyond the goalkeeper you can see Ramai comes out stretches his leg out to try and keep the ball out but it's inch perfect into the far corner from Bailey to double the lead for Aston Villa and I've got to say the tension's gone out of the stadium now isn't it real belief now from the Aston Villa fans that they are going through to the next round now they're bouncing the Aston Villa supporters all around the stadium they're on their feet bit of quality Joe wasn't it oh. bit of quality I said about the two players Bailey and Diaby they're the ones for me that uh, can open up any defence got real quality about them and we've just seen it there with Bailey never looked like he's going to do anything else apart from stroke into the back of the net just fronted up the defender then a little shimmy got on his right foot which is his, not his strongest foot but he was a lovely finish cushion finish into the far corner the silk and the skill from Leon Bailey was just too much and there could be many more European nights special nights to come for Aston Villa between now and the end of the season they can see a path to Athens and that's the final of course of the Europa Conference League Villa heading to the quarter-finals leading Ajax by two goals to nil Ray Howell. yeah well Mansberg's the one we said about you know passing out just outside the 18 yard box a really poor ball to give away but credit to Aston Villa they're in a really good uh, position high up the field to win it back and then get the ball over to the danger man Bailey and they could be in again here Tielemans caught on the penalty area after Duran's flick he tried to steer it across to Bailey Hato gets back to turn it behind Ajax are being run ragged now Aston Villa have a third corner of the night at the north stand uh, by the way Karabag lead 3-2 away at Javi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen Javi Alonso's side as Ian Danta pointed out not been beaten at all this season in any competition but it's Karabag who lead 1-0 on the night though they are down to 10 men Karabag in that time. Well, well, Karabag not 2 0 no up in the first leg, yes. and they came back, then they took to make it 2 2. So they shouldn't be surprised that they're, they're a decent side. Holt Enders in the sky, rings around Villa Park. Douglas Louise will take the in swinging corner, right footed into the six sharp box, header straight to the goalkeeper. I think it was Duran with a header, wasn't it? Carlos was in there, but Duran looked like he got the, the final touch on it. You could see that his position wasn't great. He had to twist his body and his head to get the header on target. Straight at Ramai, the goalkeeper, to make the save. But it's all Aston Villa at the moment. Ray, you were halfway out of your seat yeah, there. Yeah, well, I thought you were going to score. It looked like it was going in. By Leverkusen, Neil Karabag 2. A second for the 10 men in Germany. So 4 2 Karabag lead on aggregate. And Javi Alonso's invincible by Leverkusen side might be about to be knocked out of Europe well Xavi will tell you he's concentrating on the league <laughs> <laughs> I think he's concentrating on Liverpool for a second then that may yet happen of course I, I think he could uh, have a choice of many clubs Liverpool in complete control against Sparta Prague tonight 6-1 up on the night here's Durant for Aston Villa who lead by two goals to nil he deserves a goal he smashes it left footed but it's wide that's two or three chances in quick succession isn't he when you think about it the one when he collided with the keeper went way to the target the, the header which was easily saved by Ramai and there it was a poor finish in the end you know but he's looked a threat strong powerful really good run got on his left foot really should have asked questions of the goalkeeper uh, but missed the target completely and it looks like there's going to be another problem for Ajax, Ajax. Sotalo looks like he's got a, an injury to his uh, it, it might be his uh, hamstring just feeling the back of his right hamstring there so they may have to make another substitution Maccabi Tel Aviv 1 Olympiacos 4 so that's 5 all on aggregate some amazing ties in the Europa League and the Europa Conference League tonight that uh, a tie that is in the latter the Conference League and so Sutalo being treated here when you look at Aston Villa when you look at Unai Emery's record in European competition your old club have got to be up there with the favourites to win it Ray yeah, yeah I think they are I mean there's some decent teams still left in the competition and they won't take it for granted 
and you know this has been tough enough the first leg was tough enough and uh, until they got the second goal now they're looking in total control now you can hear the noise around the stadium absolutely fantastic Sutalo is going to trudge towards the near side touchline Liverpool cruising at Anfield tonight uh, is there any chance of a Brighton comeback against Roma Alex Crook well time running out for the Seagulls 25 to play Brighton 1 Roma nil. the closest they've come to adding to Danny Werbeck's first half goal a header from Simon Adingra straight at the goalkeeper from point blank range they've had another let off at the other end Leonardo Spinazzola the Italian international he hit the angle of post and crossbar following a mazy run Brighton 1 Roma nil. thanks Alex and sutalo has gone down the tunnel away to our left the tunnel right by the corner flag here at Villa Park so Ajax temporarily down to 10 while they wait to make the change early ball in from the left hand side the far side by uh, Taylor and he can't find Brobby and Aston Villa have possession back we are 20 minutes into the second half on Talk Sport Aston Villa lead by two goals to nil let's get the latest from Anfield with Talk Sports Mark Wilson still Liverpool 6 Sparta Prague 1 we've just seen Cody Gakpo miss a great chance for his hat trick played in by Elliot he blazed over and into the cop we're about to see a senior Liverpool debut for the 20 year old Mateusz Musielowski he's about to come on for the last 18 minutes Liverpool 6 Sparta 1 and here it just gets worse for Ajax because Simon Mansberg has been sent off for a second bookable offence and the Aston Villa fans are waving him goodbye Ajax are down to 10 men 2-0 down in the tie and it just goes from bad to worse for the Dutch club Aston Villa surely heading through now yeah well what the problem was is obviously they're down to 10 men at the minute and Mansberg was trying to get back to help out in a centre back position Duran had run in behind him and he just tugged the shirt tugged them back spotted by the referee who just waited the moment just to give himself some thinking time but with him already been on a yellow card it had to be a second yellow and off he goes and well if it was uphill battle for Ives <laughs> at 2-0 down <laughs> go down to 10 men we've got no chance what's it like to be collectively waved goodbye by 40,000 people at the same time as he goes down the tunnel does Mansberg so that's it for him a second yellow and we had two sendings off in the first leg one for each team and Ajax have had another player sent off tonight and Anton Guy is going to come on for them he's a, a centre half another youngster another 21 uh, year old Aston Villa lead by two goals to nil against the 10 men now Salford City 2 Stockport County 2 and a great comeback for Stockport from 2 nil down they would go joint top of League 2 with a win and they've uh, still got about 25 minutes to get a winner there Bayer Leverkusen 1 Karabag 2 in the second leg as Ajax give it away Paul from the goalkeeper Gerard on the edge of the penalty area can he punish them lays it out to Diaby who tried to squeeze it past Ramai at the near post goalkeeper fortunately could make the save you know what I thought he'd done everything right there Diaby gave the goalkeeper the eyes he, fe he fainted that he was going to cross it because Telemans was coming in Bailey was coming in and then he tried to just angle it in towards the, no the near post but Ramai the keeper read it really well got down smartly to his right hand side to make the save but it's all Villa at the moment it just looks like a matter of time before they get the third goal in this game against the 10 men of Ajax into the final quarter tonight so Bayer Leverkusen 4-3 down on aggregate now to the 10 men of Karabakh Club Bruges 3 Molden 0 and here goes Linson looking to dart up the middle cleared away by Aston Villa so Club Bruges 4-2 uh, up on aggregate against Molden in their Europa Conference League time we've got Premier League football for you this weekend on Talk Sport Burnley Brentford on Talk Sport 2 on Saturday in an important game in the relegation battle all four FA Cup quarter-finals live with us the South Wales derby Swansea v Cardiff on Saturday lunchtime as finally Ajax get Guy back onto the pitch they were down to nine there temporarily but now back up to ten and tomorrow uh, Talk Sports coverage of Cheltenham continues Alan Brazil uh, on breakfast from 6am we've got commentary of the Gold Cup among other races tomorrow the Gold Cup Joe, always a highlight Joe, what happened to you know two-legged ties where they used to be quite close like a nil-nil and a one-nil <laughs> all those <laughs> yes. teams are like 9-2 <laughs> on aggregate well 5-4 four, four four threes I mean it's incredible number of goals that's been scored the away goal going maybe Ray <laughs> as Henderson crosses in from the right blocked off by Torres because so you think more teams are um, more attack minded now than ever before uh, it seems like it <laughs> it seems like it West Ham 5-2 I mean, it's the amount of goals is, is, is absolutely incredible no tight, not, not many tight matches now is there yeah West Ham 5-0 winners over Freiburg to go through in the Europa League to the quarterfinals David Moyes' side who won this competition the Conference League last season so just to confirm I actually have had Mansberg sent off have brought on Guy for Sitalo so back up to 10 men 
Aston Villa lead 2-0, Pal Torres has possession. A couple of moments ago we saw a little clip on our monitor of the second goal, we got a little monitor in the commentary position, Bailey with it, and it was such great feet, right? Yeah, six, six people fell out the stand because of the dummy that he, shoot, <laughs> that he did. Six he went one way and everyone on pitch. Before. It was absolutely brilliant play from, from uh, Leon Bailey, and uh, a, a great finish because he done when he's in that area, he doesn't panic, you know, he just stroked it. There was no real force on the strike, it was just a lovely side-footed pass into the corner to double the lead for Aston Villa. And look, if they want to, you know, they could go for a third if, if they want, but they might be thinking, you know what, we're happy enough, we'll just control the game now, just retain possession and make the ten men run around. It'll be just one defeat in their last eight home European matches for Aston Villa. And that, of course, Villa Park will come into its own you feel in the quarter of tomorrow the semi-final it? it is tomorrow morning yeah. and for both the quarter and the semis race so the pathway will be laid for Aston Villa as Durant slides in firm but fair on Wrench on the halfway line this young Ajax side had possession with Akpop darting down the near side of the field he sets up Guy on the overlap John McGinn darts forward to win it back in front of Guy oh, and then brilliant. wins a free kick off him as well the tireless McGinn look even the, even his teammates uh, you know the substitutes and the, the coaching staff on the sidelines are all applauding him for the way that he got back to help out defensively I mean he won it he could have just kicked the ball downfield but he just showed his strength in possession of the ball and Guy the substitute came in and just wrapped his arms around and gave away the free kick but the noise in the stadium is absolutely electric now and when the draw is made tomorrow the other teams that are through to the, the last eight won't want Villa, I can assure you. They won't want to play Villa over two legs. The captain's name is being sung by the Villa Park masses here. And a, a confidence-boosting night for Aston Villa too after the, the defeat to Tottenham at the weekend. Aston Villa with a two-point lead in the race for fourth, but Tottenham do have a game in hand. What an end to the season it'll be in the Premier League as well. You've got to make sure you download the TalkSport app to be across everything. It's free, easy to download, and then you can just swipe between us on Talk Sport and Talk Sport 2 as well with all of the live football and the Euros in the summer as well. well I've got to say, Duran, who looked like he had a knee, remember in the first half when he came on as a sub, he looked like he had a knee injury, didn't he? He was struggling. He, yes. I tell you what, he's made it's some really run. recovery. Yeah, but he looks strong, he looks physical, he looks like he wants to get in behind the back line. He's really showed a lot of promise, making good runs into, uh, into the final third of the field to affect the game and he's a good option for his teammates so Rangers out of the Europa League West Ham through comfortably against Freiburg Liverpool heading through 11-2 on aggregate against uh, Sparta Prague Brighton heading out 4-1 down on aggregate against Roma in the Conference League Aston Villa 2-0 up against the 10 men of Ajax 18 minutes to go and uh, Aston Villa perhaps set to make further changes here yeah, they will do. Obviously, players coming back from injury. You know, that's well, Diego are, Carlos yeah, is going to have to come on. Yeah, what, what happens is, obviously, the, the, the manager's fully aware of players who have not had a lot of game time recently, so you, they're, they're worried about them picking up injuries, even the slights in Oxford. Carlos is down at the moment, so with the injury issues that he's had recently, they're, they're not going to uh, keep him on the pitch. They're, they're going to make the change. Well, Ollie Watkins went off in the first half. Gareth Southgate will keep a keen eye on that ahead of the games against Brazil and Belgium over the international break, both live on Talk Sport. And uh, Diego Carlos, who has uh, just come back after a hamstring injury, is going to have to come off here as well. So he applauds the whole ten, then they applaud back. And here comes Clement Longley. The, the good news is he's actually he's walking off, you know, so you're not sure exactly the extent yeah. of the injury that he's got, but it's also a better sign when you're walking off than getting carried off, I can assure you. Ray Houghton, great to have Ray with us tonight for commentary as uh, Diego Carlos takes the long walk around the edge of the pitch. And Tim Irobana, the youngster, a 20-year-old, is going to come on as well. He started the first leg, that was his first... Aston Villa starts since April of 2022. He spent last season on loan in the EFL at Queen's Park Rangers. And off goes Bailey, whose uh, second half goal has provided maybe the real highlight of the game. Yeah, actually. look, standing ovation in the stadium, isn't it? I mean, that, it's only the Ajax fans are not clapping them because they'd be disappointed with the finish to double the lead for Aston Villa. But you hear the rest of the stadium, they're just standing and applauding for a wonderful goal. Just the way that uh, he went past the defender, the young. Hey, to young 18-year-old, isn't he? They just sidestepped and body shifted on one side, then on to the other, got on his right foot and just calmly placed into the far corner. So, Iroh 
and Longley with his first touch of cushioned header to find his fellow sub. Now a flick by Tielemans down the middle, the pace of Diaby could carry him through here, Diaby trying to race clear and they can't get it away, Ajax has come to Duran, fires it, looked like it was in off the bar, but the signal the from goal. the referee is goal, it was in off the woodwork, John Duran absolutely smashed it past the goalkeeper, hit the underside of the bar, bounced it over the line, what a night this is for Aston Villa, Aston Villa 3, the 10 men of Ajax nil, Villa are roaring into the quarter-finals. Well I said about Duran and the uh, input he's had in the last 15-20 minutes, he looked hungry, he looked strong, he looked confident, and what a strike that was, unfortunately Wrench is still down at the moment, I'm not sure the extent of the injury that he's got, but as soon as he hit it, I could tell it hit the underside of the crossbar. You could see it gone over the line and came back out. The referee took a moment or two and then motioned to his watch to say he had confirmation that the ball had gone over the line. What a strike! And no more than the lad deserves because, do you know what? In the last 20 minutes, he's really showed his quality. Well, Wrench is being treated now for Ajax after going down in the build up to that goal. And John Duran has his first since September. He just stumbled awkwardly on the ball there. Yeah, yeah, he? I don't think there was any uh, impact from a, an Aston Villa player. But what a strike. He's hit this with some force, isn't he, from the edge of the 18-yard box. And we were in a good position to see it, Ray, and I think you and I both thought you, you could just see it. It was not it far was over the line, but it was over the line. It was, it was enough. Oh, it's look, it's at the, look at the movement he got on the ball. And that pace he's hit it with is absolutely incredible. Brilliant finish. He, he actually looked over to the far side to the, where the assistant referee was to see if it had gone over the line and replays is shown. It was quite clearly well over the line and he goes over to salute the fans who have been very good towards him. But, you know, I've not seen a great deal of him uh, live. But when he first came on, I was worried about his fitness because he picked up that slight knock. But in this second half, he's been absolutely electric. And what a finish that was. And what a shame for Ajax and Wrench here. They had brought the stretcher on, but he can barely walk as he limps towards the near side touchline and he will have to go off. Dance, get warmed up, he might be on in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> the fear in the face of Ian Dancer is uh, oh, they're dropping at the moment, aren't they? The players. It looks like he's got a groin injury. Just the way he's walking over them, and that's just the way that he his body weight went one way, didn't it? And his leg went the other, and I think he's just uh, pulled something in his groin and that's why he's going off at the moment Benjamin Tahirovic will come on for Ajax Aston Villa 3 the 10 men of Ajax nil it's surely all over here on Talk Sport latest from the Annex with Alex Crook Brighton 1 Roma nil. the Seagulls 12 minutes away from a European exit they are pushing for more goals in this one Jan Paul van Hecker has put two headers off target his fellow defender Igor also forced a good save from the Roma goalkeeper from the edge of the box but Roberto De Zerbi just in front of me looking a bit resigned now it's Brighton 1 Roma nil. 4-1 to the visitors on aggregate yes the damage was done in the first leg for Brighton wasn't it they did check uh, VAR the Duran goal by the way for a potential offside but um, that was all cleared up pretty quickly so 3-0 yeah, and actually Ajax are still waiting to get Tahirovic on for some reason so they're down to 9 at yeah the they're down to 9 at the moment but look it's game over you can tell by the body language you know they're not moving around the pitch quickly at all Jordan Henderson just filling in as a makeshift centre back at the moment until they make the change for Aston Villa now, it's just how many goals you want to score. Alex Moreno in the left wing position near side of the field. He's one on one with Guy. He drives towards the dead ball line and he can't keep the ball in play. That was surely out of play. And the assistant eventually puts that chequered flag up into the air and goal um, kick. Do you know what? The assistant referee is 60 yards away on the far side. How he's seen the ball get over, I don't know. It had gone out. No, there's no question it gone over. But he couldn't see it from there, I can assure you. So here comes Tahirovic, uh, Bosnian for Wrench. And now Jordan Henderson, who will be part of the England squad, is he is he playing at centre half? Well, it looks that way at the moment. If that is the case, I mean, he's not that mobile as he's not as mobile as he once was. You'd be thinking that uh, Duran's going to try to get one v one situations against them. Here's Brobby darting down the near side, the right for Ajax, heading for the halt end, but he's held up by Moreno. Back in field, it goes to Tahirovic. This Ajax's last realistic hope of winning a trophy. Guys cross to the far post is headed away. They're so far behind in the Eredivisie. They have been for almost all the season and they're going to go out of the Europa Conference League here to Aston Villa. Well, you, a, a point you made earlier, Joe, was absolutely spot on and that clearance off the line yes. from Matt Cash was absolutely yep. huge when you think you're going at half-time 1-1. Different complex to the game, isn't it? Yep. As it is, 
you know, uh, Ajax are forced to try and press to get themselves back into it. They've left themselves isolated, made mistakes, certainly with the second goal when uh, Mansbert gave the ball away, which allow allowed the ball to get to Bailey over on that right-hand side to finish for the second goal. The sending off. So that all changed because of... The, you know, they, they could have went in at half-time 1-1 out of a different complexion. And just on Jordan Henderson, he's thundered a long ball downfield, easy for the goalkeeper to gather. Does he look like he's got the pace for top-level international football now? I, I, look, listen, I've only seen him in this game, so yep. if you want me to comment on that, no, he doesn't. But is that to say he's like this in every game? I don't know. I don't watch uh, Ajax on a regular basis. I'm sure Gareth has, and you have to go with the manager and his thoughts and what he's seen. He's seen a lot more of it, as is his coaching staff. They've been out to games to watch him to see what his fitness is like, and they've made that decision. Time will tell. Great ball by Cash to find Tielemans wriggling away from Tahirovic on the halfway line. The 10 men of Ajax are looking increasingly fatigued now. 10 minutes to go. Sports bar comes next. 0 3 7 1 7 double 2 double 3 double 4 uh, West Ham cruising through, Rangers going out of Europe and Liverpool easing past Sparta Prague, Brighton heading out of the Europa League and Aston Villa in the end, and well, it's pretty comfortable isn't it, 3-0 up and heading into the Conference League quarter-finals, the 1982 European Cup winners. Here is Douglas Luiz, 10 yards shy of the halfway line, striding forward, unchallenged really by anybody in the black shirts of Ajax today, forward by Cash to uh, Diaby and the Olays begin at Villa Park, little one-two between Diaby and Tielemans, the defenders made a mistake, Diaby's darting through here, angle against him in the area, shoots, runs it in! It's four for Aston Villa, and that was an emphatic finish from Moussa Diaby on a night of delight for Unai Emery and Aston Villa into the quarter-finals of the Conference League with a bang. Aston Villa 4, Ajax 0. Yeah, well, that's the icing on the cake, isn't it? There was a mistake over on the left-hand side from Sosa. He just looks tired, didn't he? That's the majority of the Ajax players. Heads are down. They know they're well out of this tie, but I said about the two players, Bailey, who's gone off, who got the second goal, and this lad, Diaby, they've been absolutely electric. You know, when they're on the game and they're direct and they run at players, they're a real threat. And he got in behind, you see the mistake there from Sosa, he's in, he could. He had options inside the centre of the goal, but he took it on himself, and he, with his left foot, he fainted to go across the keeper to the far post, and just rifled it into the, the near post, into the top corner, gave Ramai no chance whatsoever, and a goal that his play thoroughly deserves. So 4-0 to Aston Villa, and 4 different scorers. The Army's first goal since the FA Cup replay defeat to Chelsea here in February. Now then, Douglas Luiz takes the applause as he goes off and a great opportunity for the 18-year-old Amari Kellyman to make his third senior appearance. Yeah, it's great for the youngsters, you know, they, to come out in this atmosphere when the pressure's off, you know, you're, you're winning the tie, you just can go out there and play with your freedom and the confidence and enjoy the rest of the match that you're on for. Well, a statement win for Aston Villa, 4-0 up against Ajax. As we've said, alluded to many a time, this is nothing like a, a top Ajax team, but it's a great response to losing 4-0 at home I, in the Premier League. Well, that's, a great, that's the point I was just going to bring up there, Joe. After what happened at the weekend against uh, Tottenham Hotspur, it was very important to come out with, tonight with the right attitude uh, to get the performance and get that game out of your system and certainly it looks like the Aston Villa players have done that and can they keep a clean sheet at home for the first time since the 9th of December and that uh, win against Arsenal in the Premier League Not the only thing and actually the only disappointment is the potential injury to Watkins didn't look well, a very serious one although I suppose from Aston Villa's perspective Ray they know they've any knee injury you're unsure of you're, yeah. you really are you know because he looked like he was going to be okay initially because he got up and got on with the game and he scored the goal and ran away but after that you could see he was in a bit of trouble Diaby driving forward menacingly again he's laid it square to McGinn McGinn hits it left footed it's a poor effort but it could deflect into the path of Kellyman hacked up into the air by Hato the offside flag is up it'll be a free kick to Ajax they have got a game away at West Ham on Sunday have Aston Villa so so you, th you thought John McGinn shot there didn't you that was a cross <laughs> do you think <laughs> of course it was a shot <laughs> Did I say cross? <laughs> no, I'm only sounding a joke. <laughs> I mean, he tried to take the shot on. It was that bad. He nearly turned out in a brilliant cross. It, you know what? It cash. nearly, it nearly did. <laughs> the left foot of John McGinn, often so reliable. He just sliced off his boot there. 
you see it's uh, Aston Villa West Ham this weekend yes well Aston, Aston Villa have got four so far West Ham got five <laughs> tonight so it'll probably be nil-nil on, at the weekend <laughs> well, we'll bring you the goals at the weekend as we always do on Talk Sport on Sunday and on Sunday at Chelsea Leicester and Manchester United Liverpool in the FA Cup quarters all four quarterfinals live on Talk Sport and Man United Liverpool is uh, an exclusive commentary you can only hear it with us little touch by Duran now into the path of young Kellyman Kellyman is 25 yards from goal in a central position oh he nearly played it square into the path of McGinn Aston Villa coming forward at will now in search of a fifth goal against the 10 men as Grobby manages to hold up possession away from the uh, sliding challenge in the middle of midfield by Europa now a full time at Anfield in the Europa League Mark Wilson Liverpool 6 Safar to Prague 1 damage done with 4 goals in 7 minutes first half for Nunez Clark Salah and Gakpo but Mancevic got one back before the break but further goals for Saboslai and Gakpo meant that Liverpool go through 11-2 on aggregate uh, Mo Salah played the full 90 as well looks good to go on Sunday full time here at Anfield Liverpool 6 Safar to Prague 1 well, that's good news for Jurgen Klopp. Yeah, absolutely. He'll be delighted that some of his uh, players have been out injured recently. have got some much-needed minutes on the pitch. And I've said about Liverpool of late, the big thing that Jurgen's going to have with all the players coming back from injuries, who he starts, who, who he starts the loving is. That's going to be a big goal for him. That's going to be great. 3.30 on Talk Sport from Old Trafford on Sunday. Here is Duran for Aston Villa on the halfway line. Four minutes to go. One or two empty blue seats starting to appear now. Aston Villa fans heading off into the night, confident that the job is done, and it certainly is done here. 4 0 up against the 10 men after a, a cagey and quite forgettable first leg, really, that ended goalless in Amsterdam. And Unai Emery did say that Villa didn't really play very well, but they have played well in the second half, in particular today. Kellyman. Tall and slender, the midfielder knocks it towards the left behind the run of Alex Moreno and out of play. You know what? He done really well there. He's playing in that number ten role. He got turned on it really nicely indeed, and then he had the option to play out to Moreno a little bit early, an extra touch, and that's what you can't afford to do. You know, when you're playing youth football, that's easy enough because no one really closing you down. But when you step up levels, you have to do it quicker, and that's all that was missing there from Kellyman. So Liverpool through 11-2 on aggregate, Brighton 4-1 down on aggregate to Roma uh, Xabi Alonso's Bayer Leverkusen might be heading out of the Europa League 4-3 down on aggregate against the 10 men of Carabag Atalanta 3-2 up on aggregate against Sporting and the Italian team look to be heading through as Aston Villa win possession back with Duran 10 yards shy of the halfway line little touch with the outside of the boot to find McGinn and McGinn and Kellyman got their wires crossed and both collide Ajax win possession back with Tahirovic forward to Taylor. Taylor through the middle towards Brobby, and it's a good save by Martinez as Brobby tried to go round the goalkeeper, but Martinez spread himself at the feet of the striker and saved. Might have first sight a goal that Brobby's really hit with. And apart from maybe, yeah, in the first half, didn't he? That was him, it was his shot that was cleared off the line, wasn't it, by Matt Cash? But there he showed his strength and his running ability in behind the back line of Aston Villa. But credit to the keeper, Martinez. He came out, read it well, just stretched his left hand out, just got enough on the ball to take it away from the Ajax striker. Two and a half minutes of normal time remain, and quite a leisurely atmosphere at Villa Park now. The home supporters have certainly enjoyed, I'm sure, the second half in particular. Unai Emery urging them forward. John McGinn's left wing cross into the six-yard box. A good ball in, but nobody in Claret and Blue could get the touch. Borna Sosa from the opposite wing slides into clear for Ajax. There's a long row of policemen and stewards in front of the uh, Ajax supporters on the far side of the field at the moment. Aston Villa have it with a rope. Is there need for that? I mean, you know, I think they've been very good. The the, uh, the Ajax fan. They've, not shown any signs of trouble whatsoever. Now they actually support the team. You said they were in there from about three o'clock this Four afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, before we got here, Ray. Heavy touch from McGinn, who then is hacked down by Guy, and that's a free kick to Aston Villa just inside opposition territory. I wonder what the Aston Villa fans would think, Ray, that is, do you take the chance to finish fourth and get into the Champions League, and who knows what could happen with fifth place this season, but do, do you take a Champions League spot, or do, do you want to Win a, win a cup you, competition. Listen, you want to win the cup, cup competition and you want to finish fourth as well. <laughs> you want both. You want to be greedy. Because that's what football's about. It's about a winning mentality. And so far, the Aston Villa players and 
you know, the cup competition, particularly the league. As I said, like 17 wins from 28 league games is a really good return, over 60% uh, win ratio that you've got. So they'll be they'll be happy enough with that. They'll, it's just how these lads now react to the game against West Ham at the weekend because both of them have played on a Thursday how much energy have you used what other options have you got they're the things you'll be looking at as a manager but it should, should be a, an intriguing game f- from two sides of you know tonight I've got the results that they needed to get last 40 seconds of normal time Ajax will have a quarter in just a moment Boons for Henderson as he races towards the whole 10 to take it and Lille are through to the quarterfinals of the Conference League after a 4-1 aggregate win over Sturm Graz. Bayer Leverkusen 2, the 10 men of Karabag 2. So they've come from 2-0 down again, Shabby Alonso's side. So 4 all on aggregate, and that tie in the Europa League is heading to extra time. Corner to Ajax, Henderson, right-footed outswinging, ballooned to the far post, way too deep. Kept in by Taylor, who is the only man in space on that far side Borna Sosa's cross Hato trying to bring it down only halfway by Pau Torres Guy with the shot is blocked comes back out to Guy blocked again by the sliding of Banam and the assistance flagging now on the near side anyway and just a lot of tired bodies there were now even the strike that came out I think was from Sosa was straight against his own player Brobby and as you say the final whistle got a great win for Villa no added time the full time whistle goes and Aston Villa's European dream really gathers pace they are in to the quarterfinals of the UEFA Europa Conference League. They have a head coach who specialises in providing European glory. And maybe, just maybe, the road to Athens has really opened up tonight for Aston Villa and the prospects of a major trophy. They have eased past the 10 men of Ajax in the second leg here tonight at Villa Park. It was goalless class. Leon Bailey with a fine second. Then Mansbert was sent off for Ajax, who seemed to be depleted physically as the game went on. John Duran and Moussa Diaby added further goals. Four for Aston Villa, four different scorers, 4-0 winners on the night, and Aston Villa go through to the quarterfinals, 4-0 on aggregate. Thank you, Joe Shannon. I've just paid to get back into Villa Park after Leon Bailey sent me outside of the ground when he scored Villa's second. What a different atmosphere it suddenly became, Ray Houghton, because it was a bit... There was jeopardy at half-time, wasn't tense. there? Yeah, tense, because the way that Ajax finished the first half you know they had the, the chance from Brobby which was cleared off the line by Matty Cash uh, they were asking more questions they were getting numbers forward but the second goal changed as soon as the second goal went in and you could tell it was a relief just relief for Roundy and then it was a case of how many goals are Villa going to score and I've got to say some of the players that came on done themselves a power of good thought Duran uh, who struggled a little bit when he first came on to get up to the speed of the game looked like he picked up an injury but in the second half I thought he was electric some of the runs he made and he's always a threat he was always in the right areas he had a shot with his left foot that went wide to the target he could have done a little bit better a header was well saved and then a brilliant finish was the power he generated from just outside the 18 yard box I mean the keeper didn't even see it was waving it by bye hit the underside of the cross oh, we didn't, see, it we didn't smell it brilliant mate. finish from him and Villa in the end thoroughly deserved it listen to the noise in this stadium this is what they want they've been starved of success starved of European glory for a long long time Unai Emery's here he's brought back the feel good factor this stadium was absolutely rocking it was full you could hardly get a ticket for the game tonight and that shows you where they are at the moment as a football club I've spoken to our old mate Stan Collymore about Knights down here when he was playing for Villa when they got into Europe nights where it really mattered here at Villa Park and the, the crowd certainly contributed to getting Villa over the line tonight the way they roared their team on and I will say for Leon Bailey it's only just over a year since he was he was almost crying on the pitch here at Villa Park because he missed a great chance to win a derby against Wolves here in the Premier League but my how he's grown as a footballer here and £47 million on Moussa Diaby looks money very well spent yeah they were the two I said quite early on in the game they were the, the X factor for Aston Villa today every time they were in possession of the ball they looked a threat they were positive more often than not a couple of times they were just trying to slow things down but where you want I mean is in that final third or just in and around the 18 yard box that's when they come alive there's a spark to their play they want to take players on you know they've great great uh, you know, 
upper body strength and also the way that he can move from one side to the other. For the goal, is it the way he just stepped over it. The defender, he's only a young Sahetu, only like 18 years of age. He bought the dummy. He went one side and he just took it to the other. Went, thank you, rolled it into the corner beyond the goalkeeper, Ramai, who had no chance for it. And that was, a ch- that was the moment. 2-0 up. There was no way back from there on for Ajax. Very impressive. Ajax fans are still in the Doug Ellis stand opposite us. They'll make their way out the ground fairly shortly. They did roll their team on early on. What's that little bit of jeopardy with that shot cleared off the line by Matty Cash just before half-time from Brian Brobby? But Villa steamrolled at Ajax in the end, really. And they're through to tomorrow's draw. And as Joe Shannon said in commentary, they will not only find out their quarter-final opponents, but their potential semi-final opponents as well, because the path to the final is laid out that little bit clearer with the draw that's made tomorrow. Benfica knocked out Rangers earlier tonight in the Europa League. Liverpool come to be through, winning about 27 to one aggregate or something against Sparta Prague. But it wasn't to be a miracle comeback for Brighton at the Amex against Roma. Full time there, here's Alex Crook. Yeah, the final whistle has just sounded. Brighton's first ever European campaign is over. In truth, it was over after they were thrashed 4-0 in the Italian capital a week ago. It's finished Brighton 1, Roma 0 on the night. Danny Welbeck with the only goal of the game. A stunning 20-yard curler into the top corner. Eight minutes before half-time. They pushed and pushed for more goals in the second half. But the Roma defence held firm. Uh, Spillar in goal for the visitors twice tonight. And Sufat and also saved smartly from Igor, Simon Adingra and JP Van Hecker twice should have done better with headers but Roma who had Zardar Asmoon's overhead kick goal harshly ruled out for a high boot in the first half they hit the woodwork through Leonardo Spinazzola those Brighton fans who did stay right until the bitter end are giving their team a standing ovation but it finishes here Brighton 1, Roma 0 Roma win 4-1 on aggregate Thank you, Alex. Now, does that mean Jason Cundy is going to go, has anyone seen Fat Boy Slim? Or is it going to be, has anyone seen Ali McCoist? Sports Bar coming up in the next few minutes with Jason alongside Jamie O'Hara taking your calls. Why not book your call now to speak to the boys? 03717 You can also send them a WhatsApp voice note on the same number, should you wish to do so, in Europe tonight. So Rangers bow out against Benfica. 1-0 on the night to the Portuguese, 3-2 on aggregate. AC Milan, 3-1 winners against Slavia Prata, go 7-3 through on aggregate. Villarreal, 3 Marseille, 1, but Marseille go 5-3 on aggregate. West Ham, live on TalkSport 2-1, 5-0 against Freiburg, that's a 5-1 aggregate win. Atalanta, knocked out Sporting, 2-1 in Italy, a 3-2 win on aggregate for Atalanta. Bayer Leverkusen have just beaten Karabakh. They were, again, two goals down and their unbeaten record this season was being threatened. Karabag then had a man sent off by Leverkusen, go through the gears, and Patrick Schick got the winning goal to see them through 5-4 on aggregate. Brighton out against Roma, as you've heard. Liverpool 6-1 winners against Sparta Prague. And in the uh, Europa Conference League, uh, Fenerbahce threw 3-1 on aggregate against Union Saint-Germain of Belgium. Fiorentina and Maccabi Haifa drew one apiece, but Fiorentina threw 5-4 on aggregate. Pauk beat Dinamo Zagreb 5-1 to turn it round to go through 5-3 on aggregate for the Greek side. Uh, Victoria Pilsenia beat Servette on penalties. It was 0-0 in both legs, but Pilsenia won 3-1 on penalties. Club Bruges won 3-0 against Mulder to win 4-2 on aggregate. And Lille 4-1 aggregate winners against Sturm Graz. And they're playing extra time in Tel Aviv. Maccabi won Olympiakos 4. What a comeback from the Greek side. 5-5 on aggregate. That is going into extra time. But here at Villa Park, it finished Aston Villa 4 Ajax 0 for a 4-0 aggregate win. Just finally, Ray Hatton, before we let you go, we hand over to the boys on the sports.